I could see that they were uh, out there with um, all these different agencies and groups running checkpoints around the city, and I just watched a whole bunch of TSA people wearing bright blue windbreaker jackets go into the federal building. By the time we got the cameras on, they were already inside. So expect to see a bunch of people that have TSA uh, on their bright blue uh, outfits uh, out here. So that's just some of what's going on here uh, today. <clears throat> but they've got the Dallas County uh, School Police out here. They've got everybody out here. And uh, there is a uh, checkpoint that they're running over here. So we're going to see. And it is, it's wanding. It's wanding. Prisoner training because the establishment killed Kennedy and brought in a police state. Uh, now uh, they uh, are uh, tra tra treating us all for our prisoner, prisoner induction training. Only in America uh, do you have this where the criminal government flies by helicopter and isn't searched, but the... Uh, the school children are to get into this event. Absolutely uh, amazing. Uh, down here live, uh, covering all of this. Sir, which line should we get into particularly? Trying to find out. Yes. No, no, I'm, I'm going into the media area. I was already in there. Okay. Um, sure, sure, sure. Which, which, where am I supposed to go in when they have the have the media around back over there where the uh, TV crews are. Oh. So, like, all the streets are blocked over here? And, again, get this on video. School children are being searched here. School children are, 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 are being searched to go into this. This is the total prisoner training right over here. Absolute total prisoner training. Oh, so I get it. I was in there yesterday, but now they've pushed back the perimeter further. So I need to call the media folks. I understand. Hey, the shot's right here, bro. Shot's like right over here. Come over here and do it. Here. This is the best shot right here. All right, again, I'm out here directing folks while we're live on the audio and video streams at InfoWars.com. And right over there is where all this is going. Sure, sure, thank you. Anyways, uh, so, so how many streets are closed down? All the way around the corner, the whole perimeter. All right, so it's all, it's all been closed. All right, so, so again, where, where is that particular park we're going to? I want you to call Richard and tell him we are going with my original plan. They did shut it all down. Let's go to the park where Gucciardi's meeting all the people, okay? Um, now, I know we met at the, again, particular park, but now I need one of you, one of you, to call Richard and to bring Dew and them over here to pick us up or to tell us the name of the park because I don't have all that on me. I'm doing the live broadcast. In fact, Leanne, do you, do you know what the park is we're meeting everybody at? That's right, Below Garden. And, and, and can we pull that up? Okay, pull that up on the phone. And uh, we will go over there. So as they promised to do, we probably should have gotten in here even earlier this morning, uh, they have locked it down, and they have this private security company searching the school kids to get in, patting them down with TSA-style prisoner training. And we're talking about elementary school students. Uh, but meanwhile, all that is allowed in is the corporate establishment media uh, so that they can sit up there and project the official story over and over again. Okay, uh, so you know where Below Park is? Fantastic. So you know which way to go? Okay, fantastic. Follow McAdoo. Again, because this is all impromptu, folks, as we're down here and we change plans, and we've uh, had our uh, force of reporters split into three today so they can cover from different angles. And so we need to call Rob Dew so he can tell Richard to come and drop everyone off now, so they understand, at Below Park and our Below Gardens. And again, we're broadcasting on 104.1 citywide, correct? And so everybody listening to my voice, all the info warriors, um, we were going to go down there and not interrupt the uh, memorial propaganda service. Believe me, JFK would not want them to be using his death to push their police state. Uh, but now we're definitely going to have to demonstrate because they have shut it down four blocks in all directions. Absolutely incredible. And there are masses of school children uh, who are being allowed in to be propagandized and brainwashed uh, and getting off buses, and they're being, they're being searched TSA-style uh, while that happens. 
while that goes on. Hey, I tell you what, tell them to tune in to 100.41. I'll give them instructions over the radio. I'll do it that way. I am the chief cook, bottle washer, coordinator. I pay the bills, I carry out the trash, and I love it because this is the real info war. 104.1 FM, and you've got uh, here all of the uh, so-called establishment types that have all pledged uh, here that they believe. These are folks getting off these buses uh, and, and then being uh, sent down to then go through the uh, TSA uh, style searching. And again, I show this crowd here. I would imagine that there are going to be TSA people out searching, as I saw about eight of them go in a building with about ten other cops. Uh, so we're down here right now showing everyone who's disgorging to go be props in this uh, movie production, this Hunger Games production of uh, the lone gunman killed the president and uh, Keebler elves uh, are real and Santa Claus is real. And you look at these people that are getting off these buses that are being allowed into the event, and they look absolutely proud. They just look pleased as punch to feel like they're part of the establishment. They were the select people, the 10% of the population that believes that uh, JFK acted alone, JFK acted alone, that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. And again, I'm out here broadcasting live. We're going to switch over to the main radio feed coming up here in just a few minutes. Uh, if the crew is listening to me, um, we are headed down to Below Gardens, and we're on the right direction. And we are following McAdoo there right now. So here we go. And, oh, here's a good shot right here. The city that helped cover up... The city that helped cover up the murder of JFK uh, is now here basically acting like they care about JFK and uh, trying to keep the First Amendment down. They told us we wouldn't be allowed down there yesterday, but we went through their blockade and they backed down. But uh, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, with the police. Uh, and this is just one area down here. They're going to have to write a lot of tickets. They're going to have to write a lot of tickets to be able to pay for all this because, you know, they're not going to be able to write tickets all day out there and raise money and uh, find people uh, who have marijuana in their car or other drugs shipped in by the government to put in jail. So, again, uh, Network, we're going to go to break here in just a few minutes, and we'll make it on down to the park where we're going to have our free speech march down to the barricades just to exercise free speech because the mayor said that it didn't exist. But, again, uh, we are out here on the 50th anniversary of the murder of John F. Kennedy, and it is pretty cold. <coughs> now, uh, where is Leanne McAdoo and Darren McBreen? Darren McBreen, you're out here today. We're walking. Uh, McAdoo did not bring sufficient c clothing. Uh, but uh, Darren McBreen, what do you make of this uh, cordon and all these police? This is crazy. I I'd say a lot has changed since the JFK assassination 50 years ago. We now live in a country where the right to peaceably assemble and demonstrate requires government permission. Or in this case, it's just prohibited. Or We're not even supposed to be here. They've threatened us with arrest. So this is a spectacle. I'd say a lot has changed since back then. That's right. And, and, and again, they were going to arrest us or give us tickets. Man, it is windy here. Are you freezing to death, Magadoo? There's Magadoo. Magadoo is shutting Like a down. wet poodle out here. Anyways, uh, 104.1, we are transmitting the people's voice of liberty against tyranny, against the state-run media. And they have got all the major streets cordoned off and blocked to make sure that none of the slaves can come interfere. Because we would be like Toto. We would be like Toto. What are you particularly showing me? Oh. Oh, yeah, they got a mobile police camera unit here. Look at this. See, so you guys just went to the break. Okay, we'll go to the network till David Knight brings me in. We're good. Alex is in Dallas. This is the 50th anniversary of the assassination of JFK. And if we look at the official flyer from them, they say this is the 50th. They don't say the 50th what. And they say it's honoring the memory of President John F. Kennedy.
The elephant in the room is the fact that he was killed in Dallas. If they're going to honor the memory, they could do it in Massachusetts or somewhere where it was his home. The reason that this is happening today, that they don't want to talk about, that they don't want anybody to see, is because he was assassinated there. And they don't want anybody to look at the details because the details and the official story just don't add up. And just as that liner said, government cover-ups. We want answers. And so Alex Jones is live on the street. He's on his way to Below Gardens because they've got an area there cordoned off about four blocks around where the dog and pony show. They have a big opera ceremony, the Dallas Symphony Orchestra. It's going to be there. A lot of songs, Star Spangled Banner, America the Beautiful. If you look at the program, it's a... It's kind of a big pageant that they've got set up, but they're ignoring the obvious questions. But Alex is on the street right now, and he's got some information for us. It's pretty cold there, isn't it, Alex? It is. We're going to be reporting down here for the next three hours uh, from Dealey Plaza. Again, thank you for joining us. It is November 22nd, 2013, the 50th anniversary of the shadow government, the criminal elements of the government assassinating John F. Kennedy. And since then, demonizing anyone that questions their official narrative and their fairy tale. And David, you crystallized it all uh, so simply there. We've got to repeat this over and over again because it's the facts. This so-called memorial is about letting the state-run media, as they've been doing the last week, regurgitate the official narrative over and over again and demonize anyone that questions their propaganda. And they have now blocked it back about three, four blocks from Dealey Plaza uh, in two directions, about two blocks where we're at. And we're going to go down, we knew this would happen, to meet folks to then march down for the First Amendment from the Below Gardens. And Below, uh, as a media company, radio, TV, newspapers, has always been at the heart of attacking anyone that questions the official story. Imagine not believing known liars. You're a conspiracy theorist, according to their rules, if you think Obamacare is a scam and kicks people off insurance and raises premiums. You don't have to argue with us. Just call us racist or call us a conspiracy theorist. It's just a, hey, I don't talk to you. You don't exist. You're bad. <clears throat> Shut up. So as of this morning uh, up in the hotel room, I could look down into Dealey Plaza and, in fact, that is another really good point, folks. We actually have cards to that hotel, so they have to let us in. That's another point that I hadn't even thought of. So later, we're going to try to use that to get in there to our hotel uh, and see what happens uh, uh, with that. Absolutely. Uh, but, again, there's going to be a lot happening. We're going to recap everything that's happened today. And then also we'll take breaks off and on so David Knight can cover all the other top stories that are on Infowars.com and Prison planet.com you can also follow us on twitter at real alex jones i have met so many incredible people out here especially last night it was electric and i just met a really neat person a very interesting artist i'll just leave it at that uh but a, a very exciting a shout out to her and it's just so amazing to be around people that see that this country is turning into an authoritarian police state and that we're not going to go along with it. And then we came down here and defied the mayor saying no First Amendment, no handing out flyers, no being around Dealey Plaza for a week before. We went down there. We stood up for the First Amendment. And I want to salute everybody that came out here and did that and was part of that. Uh, so we're going to go to break here in a moment with David. We're going to come back as we march uh, up to the gardens to meet up with liberty lovers and First Amendment supporters and heretics that... That, that question the official story. So we'll be right back again. I'm Alex Jones reporting for the 50th anniversary of the assassination of JFK. We're down here researching uh, assassination history, political assassination, and defeating the mainstream corporate whore state-run media. We'll be right back. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here in Austin. And in Dallas, we have Alex Jones and crew covering the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination. Now, reading from the official flyer, listen to this. The 50th, and I'll say what? The 50th, honoring the memory of President John F. Kennedy, is a public memorial taking place November 22nd. Now, 
We've just seen Alex turned away. We've just seen a police state barricades. We've seen them patting down children. You know, if you'll believe the official story about the Kennedy assassination and Lee Harvey Oswald, I guess you can believe that little children are a threat to this country and that we need armies of police state TSA type employees patting down everybody and controlling every checkpoint. Alex, you there? You're on your way to Below Gardens, right? Yes, sir. In fact, I'm about to arrive at Below Gardens right now, where it looks like about 100 people have already assembled about 30, 45 minutes early. In about 30, 45 minutes, if you're listening to us locally on 104.1, the Patriot Channel we put up for the few days, to go through the electronic Berlin Wall of Censorship, uh, you can come down and join us at the corner of Commerce Street and Griffith. Uh, it's just about five blocks away from Dealey Plaza. Again, uh, you can just search engine it. It's very, very easy. We're going to march on Maine uh, down to the barricades where they have literal TSA. Actually says TSA. Uh, I saw TSA coming in out of federal buildings, and they have people searching uh, the folks that are there. So absolutely amazing that this is going on. They've now blocked it off. I don't know, three, four blocks on one end, three, four blocks on the other, two blocks on another side, and then I don't know how many blocks on this side. When we march down, we will find out. But they've got police a good seven, eight blocks up uh, the street, even where I'm looking down the road. Uh, huge police presence here, and it is a very cold day. I guess about 35 degrees or so. I can feel sleet hitting me uh, in the face. <clears throat> because of the bad weather, we were unable to get the aircraft uh, up into the air uh, with the banner towing to get the word out to folks. But we are here at the Belo uh, Gardens right now. Yeah, good job being there, folks. And they have a giant megaphone made out of wood here that will show TV viewers. If you're watching on Infowars.com forward slash show, or radio listeners can just search Belo Gardens uh, and, and see an image of this of this giant megaphone uh, that they've set up and put out here. It's got droning recordings coming out of it. Totally bizarre. So we're here, but David Knight said it perfectly earlier. This is a giant, I said a week. I mean, it's got to be two, three weeks that they've every night on the news, TV, building towards a crescendo, pushing the official narrative that's already collapsed like Humpty Dumpty into a million pieces. They're pushing this official narrative over and over and over and over again that one lone guy did it. And then we've talked to people that are allowed to go in. You've got to promise to say nothing. You've got, you're not allowed to have cameras. Even you're not allowed to have cell phones. Uh, you've got to be patted down. You've got to agree with the official story, basically, to go in as props for the big stage like... You're in the Hunger Games uh, or something. And we've got the guys uh, accidentally turning it on here. Just show you how. It's right here. There you go, folks. That's the on-off switch for the bullhorn. All right, we are broadcasting worldwide here. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> well, I didn't know that, too. you got to have that bullhorn for a while till you know that. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, man, this has been a crazy couple days here. It is so awesome to be here with you in defense of liberty. Yeah. So what they're here to do is basically have a giant stage like Wizard of Oz or Hunger Games so they can just keep pushing the same narrative, the same lie over and over and over and over again. And I see a lot of parents here that have brought their children out today. I can't think of a better real education than learning about how the media is controlled in this country, how we have a state-run media, how, how they're literally setting this up for the world stage to push propaganda on the world and to make the planet think that Americans believe the official story of the JFK murder. Because it's as high as 91% in many scientific polls, on average 85% or so. They vary. Robert Groden agreed with that number, and he's one of the foremost experts in the world on it. But overseas, it's in the mid-90s, as high as 95, 96. I mean, no one believes it except for establishment people who don't believe it either. They just understand it's important to lie to everybody and play along. There's no shadow government. There's no bad men. Big government never does anything bad in history. 
everything the government tells you is true, everything the mainstream media tells you is true, but don't believe any citizen journalist, don't believe any activist. No, whatever you do, and it's not a bad thing that in Tiananmen Square they don't let you onto the square for political speech or to hand out leaflets. Then it's not bad that in Dallas the mayor said, we want to be like the communist Chinese government. We want to absolutely shut down everybody's free speech and arrest you if you demonstrate, arrest you if you march, arrest you if you hand out flyers, arrest you if you have signs. So we came here in defiance of all that. We came here in defiance of this tyranny. So there it is. John F. Kennedy, the very word secrecy. Let me read that to folks on air. Let me read your sign, brother. Uh, and I've actually got the recording of this. I think it was at Columbia University about a month before he got killed. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. My gosh, he was a conspiracy theorist. He probably thought water was wet and ducks quacked. Hey, is that, hey, is that John B. Wells over there? Come on over here, brother. Yeah, i got to tell everybody something. Post, host of Coast to Coast AM on the weekend does a great job with George Norrie and the rest of the team. That's a sharp coat, brother. Good to meet you in person. Listen to this, folks. I apologize, but I wasn't told I was supposed to speak at some event. No one ever told me. And then the crew went out to it, and they come back, and they go, yeah, there's your name tag, your top billing with John B. Wells. So I wish I would have known about that in time yesterday. I would have come, but that's a dangerous thing sometimes when folks put you on the marquee, and then you, you know, don't show up, but then you don't even know. But then if you do show up, well, then who knows what's going to happen. But I tell you, man, this is crazy. It's good to meet you in person. feel like I know you from all the times you've been on with us via video, Skype. We're out here. What do you make of what you've seen happen the last few days? I know you are a Dallasite. You live here, but you're not allowed to go inside of that perimeter, even though you have 16 million listeners. I'm normally not at a loss for words, but I'll keep it short. I think they're worried about something. Look at all this police action around here. Federal police right across the street. Never thought I'd live to see the day when we had federal police. I, I don't understand what they're so worried about. And then again, yes, I do. Because it's just, like the sign says, 50 years of lies. And that's what it is. Matter of fact, that manhole cover I've been singing out about that connects to that shaft, last Thursday I was down there shooting some video, four fresh little weld marks right on it. And there are rumors that the street, uh, the grade of the street is going to be changed so that all evidence, all food for thought will be removed. And a few years go by and people forget about it, or at least that's what they're counting on it, but I don't think we're going to forget about it. We have, we have to get to the truth of this before this country will ever heal over this tragedy. Well, what's amazing is a lot of people I know tried to get permits to get in and be part of the media, but if you're real media or alternative media, not state-run, it doesn't matter if I've got millions of listeners. It doesn't matter if other newspapers have uh, thousands and thousands of readers. It doesn't matter if you have tens of millions of listeners. They don't care. You've got to be part of the establishment that for 50 years they're all complicit together covering it up and the mayor was saying they were going to arrest people that demonstrated or handed out flyers. I think we've had a big victory standing up to them. Yes, we have. As Brzezinski said recently, the alternative media is what stopped the Syrian action. Maybe we can stop this action. And, and, and you know, we've been the alternative media for a long time but now we're the real media they know the establishment media is imploding, 16%, 17% approval rating, trust rating, and Gallup. They're dead. I just don't think they know it yet. We don't just have zombie banks. We have zombie media. So we're the living, true media, the reality media. They're the fraud media. It's the passing of generations. We are the generation now that will replace them. And regardless of what they do, we now have the means, we have the Internet, and we have the will to get to the truth and reveal the truth and reveal in, in, in the revelation of the truth of what happened to John Kennedy, we will also know how it is that we have had our great awakening and we've awakened to the fact that we're shrouded in shadow. And we will be the generation that, that, that clears those shadows away, that brings the light to it. What are you going to be doing today out here? Are you going to march with us? Absolutely. That sounds pretty un-American to march for free speech. Well, hey, you know, put whatever T-shirt on me you want that's anti-establishment. That's, that's me. I, I've lived through several decades of this and just continue to ask questions and got no answer. So I'm with you and everybody who's here. But you know, asking questions, like Kennedy said we should do, is a thought crime. Do you want to apologize to the head of Homeland Security and others uh, for asking questions? No, I'd say quit while you still can, gracefully.
undoubtedly, uh, as a syndicated talk show host, you know, we've talked on air about it, the food of the country is accelerating towards total awakening. Yes, it is. And, and, uh, and, and they know this. The establishment knows this. And, uh, and at this point, it's unstoppable. We are not going to get tired. We are not going to forget about it. We are not going to resign ourselves to, to how it is. We're going we're gonna to go forward until we get our way. We are the people. You know, I'm kind of like a alley cat running around yelling at night when I'm on the radio. Didn't I hear that smooth, happy, reassuring voice uh, of John B. Wells? We'll just have you host the show the next three hours. Oh, uh, I, I give it over to you, but I got your back, okay? You're awesome. Well, listen, I want to talk to you some more over the next two and a half hours with David Knight riding shotgun with us back in Dallas. And listen, we got to go out and get that steak sometime. Let's do it. It's on me. Oh, no, it's not. You get the beer, I'll get the meat. <laughs> All right? Oh, beer and red meat, that sounds really terrible. It is, oh, it is. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to break. David Knight's there at the command center in Austin, Texas. I'm Darren McBreen, and these are some of the new items that are available now at InfoWarsShop.com. Alert the public to Obama's blatant abuse of power with the new Obama t-shirt. Obama's joker face on the front and come and take it on the back. It's time to publicly call him out for what he is, a tyrant. Defend the Second Amendment with our top seller come and take it t-shirts. And look at that, women's cut tank tops and t-shirts now available. Nice hat. Plus, the Don't Tread on Me flag. And now you can become a micro distributor of the InfoWars magazine. Plus, get your own copy delivered right to your door each and every month. And if you're tired like I am of you and your family being exposed to polluted drinking water, get the Pro One High Performance Water Filter. It gets rid of all pathogenic bacteria, cyst, fluoride, heavy metals, and numerous other contaminants. So join the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. Alex Jones and crew are in Dallas. This is the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination, and he's gathered there in Belo Gardens. That's where they've pushed out all the thought criminals. You know, anybody who's thinking is a criminal now. Of course, the CIA likes to use the term conspiracy theorist. That's a term they weaponize. And just calling somebody a conspiracy theorist is supposed to shame us into silence, but it doesn't. They're speaking out. They've actually got a giant megaphone there at the park. And Alex was just talking to John B. Wells, and he's got some other people there that he's talking to about the assassination. Alex, back to you. Sure. I think that's some Belo art project. Sorry I wasn't clear earlier. That's It's got like school kids recordings playing on it, but it's just funny that we chose this place to meet not knowing there'd be a giant megaphone. Uh, uh, it's very appropriate, very fitting, apropos, uh, and many other terms they could use uh, to describe it. But we're here, and John B. Wells is out here, and I, and I want in this short segment and part of the next segment to talk to folks that are here on the ground to get their view on what's happening, and then we're going to begin in about 20 minutes marching down just to show folks that we're awake. If you're listening in Dallas, Texas, and you're within 10, 15 minutes away, you're listening on 104.1 to us right now. That's a micro people's station on open frequency we're doing for two or three days to counter this Tiananmen Square level, blocking off of large areas of the city, only letting people in that uh, agree with the official story, only letting corporate establishment media, dying media run things. If you're against all that and you're listening, you need to come down to Belo Gardens. And again, what's this? This is the corner of? Commercial and uh, Commerce. Maine and Griffith. Maine and Griffith. Maine and Griffith. Across from the federal building. Come down here, folks. you got 15, 20 minutes. Because everywhere I was walking this morning in the hotel and on the street, people were saying to me, hey, where are you going to be? Where's that march? Well, there's a map on InfoWars.com. And I got a foggy map in my brain. But the point is, that's what's happening. That's what's going on. But we've only got a few minutes left in this short segment, long segment coming up. But I'm going to start talking to folks. Uh, Thomas Moore is a chaplain, uh, and he's a thought criminal. He doesn't believe a known lying criminal government. That means he's very evil. He doesn't love Big Brother. He doesn't love Stalin. He doesn't love Hitler. He doesn't love Mao. He doesn't love Fidel. He thinks they're all bad. He's not allowed to think that. Having an opinion about things is a conspiracy theory. Anyone in government is good. Romans 13, Hitler's favorite verse, do what you're told. But you're actually going to uh, read some of what President Kennedy said, some famous things. First, I have a prayer of invocation from Kennedy's inaugural. Will everyone please uncover? 
This is from the Kennedy inaugural. Almighty God, give us the grace to perform with full personal responsibility. Our duties as urged to perform in full cooperation. Our duties as American citizen to perform with complete vigilance. Our duties to teach, implement, and create true freedom as a way of life at home and abroad. For true freedom underlies human dignity and is a holy state of life. We thank thee for our country, for the manner in which thou led our fathers to establish this nation in which all men have equal rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Help us to unite, help us to so unite duties and rights that there may develop in our people a new maturity, a new maturity that will continually produce a life more abundant, liberty more responsible, and spiritual satisfactions more abiding. Amen. Here is a brief quote from JFK in that inaugural. Now the trumpet summons us again, not as a call to bear arms, though arms we need, not as a call to battle, though embattled we are, but a call to bear the burden of a long twilight struggle, year in and year out, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, a struggle against the common enemies of man, tyranny, poverty, disease, and war itself. In the long history of the world, only a few generations have been granted the right of defending freedom in its hour of maximum danger. I do not shrink from this responsibility. I welcome it. I do not believe that any of us would exchange places with any other people or any other generation. The energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all those who serve in it. And the glow from that fire can truly light the world. John Fitzgerald Kennedy inaugural, 20 January 1961. Thank you very much, Alex. You bet. How long do we, how long do we have till break, guys? I probably should have worn a watch today. All right, we're going to go out in 30 seconds. We're going to come right back, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of this uh, break that's coming up. And then I'm going to real quick give each person 30 seconds a minute so we can get to a bunch of people that are here. Uh, but I thought those quotes were pretty powerful. I was aware of those quotes. Kennedy wasn't perfect, but he loved basic human freedom, and he wouldn't sell America out to the New World Order, so they blew his head off. And we're not going to let his murderers get away with it. We're here in Dallas 50 years later, Infowars.com. Follow us on Twitter at Real Alex Jones. We're taking America back. Alex Jones here with a very important announcement for truth seekers. We've carried a lot of amazing films and books over the years on the online video bookstore at Infowars.com. And out of all the titles we've carried, one stands out because it is just so chillingly convincing. And that's Dreams from My Real Father by Joel Gilbert, available at Infowars.com. This film exposes the fraud that Obama is like nothing I've seen. If you want to know who Obama's real daddy is, this is the film for you. Don't forget, your purchase supports our broadcast and our growing media network. You'll also find at InfoWarsShop.com, None Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen, the book that woke me up. We're also carrying Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey. This book is coffin nails to the globalist takeover. The Greater Good, the most professional and up-to-date film I've ever seen exposing the scourge that is vaccines. These titles and a lot more are all available at InfoWarsShop.com. You are the resistance. It's Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. I'm here in Austin, and Alex is in Dallas. Now, we once had a president who said... The very word secrecy is repugnant to a free and open society. That president was killed 50 years ago today. And Alex is there with a bunch of people who are living in a society that is no longer free and open. It is now a police state society with the NSA spying on everybody, with the police spying on everybody, recording us everywhere in public, wanting to track our every movement by car. What do you think JFK would say about our society today, Alex? Well, undoubtedly, he would be completely horrified. And when they came to him and wanted to stage terror attacks in America under Operation Northwoods, declassified, PBS News covers it, you name it, ABC News has covered it. When they came to him and wanted to stage terror attacks, that's when he really figured out, whoa, the government's bad, i got to clean it up, we got to do something. And it wasn't like he was an angel, he just, he just wasn't evil. Neither was his brother, so they killed both of them. I wanted to get Anthony Gucciardi's take on things, because I'm talking to an ABC reporter, speaking of the devil, and then get his take on what's happening here today. But I want to salute all of you out here in the rain and the cold who are fighting for all our free speech and for the truth. Yeah! Yeah! And again, folks can see the feeds. 
Folks, Folks can see the feeds up on Infowars.com forward slash show. Uh, free to everybody there. There's already some demonstrating going. We're going to be marching in about 15 minutes, but I want to talk to some of the crowd here first. Anthony Gucciardi, uh, Infowars.com reporter, StoryLeak.com is your site. Yeah, exactly. So what happened was we were standing around listening to you, listening on the live broadcast to 160, over 160 AM and FM stations, and someone had tapped me on the shoulder saying, hey, there's an ABC reporter going around asking people a lot of weird questions. So I was trying to find her. I went over, and then she was already asking someone, oh, do you homeschool your children? Oh, why do you do that? Predominantly homeschool, trying to make everyone sound insane. And the woman was really laughing and, like, acting demonic. It was, like, like, animated in her hatred of us. Oh, yeah, exactly. And then I started talking to her, and she said, so, so who's this guy? Is he some local guy? And I said, no, it's Alex Jones. He's on 160 AM and FM station. And she goes, so Dallas then. I mean, it was, <laughs> it's, it's, it's as if they don't understand. But again, no, 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 they do know. They call themselves reporters because they can go find whoever they want to make up a story off of BS. Like if they, you know, see, it's like, it's journalism inverted. They claim, oh, we don't have opinions, but then they just go around cobbling BS together. Go ahead. Of course, because they think they're part of the elite. When in reality, their website traffic ratings are like millions of times lower than even InfoWars. And, you know, InfoWars is just dominating them all. And they're afraid of us. That's why they're blocking off all these streets, because they know if we go in, we'll completely take over it. Just like yesterday and the day before, what was all the news about? The news was about how we were walking in with massive crowds of hundreds of people taking over the entire event. They can't stand that. We went up to the actual media, too, and we talked to the reporters, and we said, do you believe the official story? You know, can you believe this attack on the First Amendment? And they would always, they would always say, yes, you know, it's actually a fairy tale. Yes, it's insane. As a Global Wire person told me, you know, we can't even believe this is going on. This is truly insane. The First Amendment doesn't even exist. You ran into at the restaurant a, uh, the head guy of a major network, you know, the head guy over production, and he was like, oh, this is pure crap. Yeah, he was, he was baffled. He was baffled what was going on. He said basically his whole crew, he was running a team of, I think, 45 people. They were just sitting around drinking. They, they had no, they, they couldn't fathom how anyone could tow the official story and believe it. They were just blown away. They're here just to get the job done. They're here. They've been told, as the major wire person told me, to go out, find the quote-unquote conspiracy theorist, and, you know, slime them, uh, smear them, make them look bad. But then we're rolling in with crowds of hundreds of people, bullhorning them, and they're like, oh, my God, this is actually the story. That's bigger. This is now the number one story of the whole thing. That's right, and, and, but they really want to have this worldwide, the propaganda they put out at the little memorial that starts in about 30 minutes. We're about to march down there. Leanne McAdoo, uh, give us your take on what you think is happening. I just think it's a very powerful moment. I feel like even when I woke up this morning, like the spirit of JFK, I mean, obviously the ceremony is going to be beautiful and remembering what a great person he was, but this is what it's all about right here. We are fighting for liberty. We are taking our country back. We're going to storm down to Dealey Plaza and let them know that we're not going to buy their lies, and, and it's true. We are the story. We are bringing it to them, to Dealey Plaza. That's right. If we would have not shown up, if you would have not shown up, if we wouldn't have done this, they could just put out their story and say everyone agrees, but one homeless guy that JFK was killed by a lone gunman. And everyone knows Obamacare gave you free health care, and it worked perfectly for everyone. And everyone knows the government never lies. And, and so everything's going to be just fine. But, no, the people know the truth. We're not buying the fraud anymore. Sir, you showed me an ad in the paper that was interesting. Tell us who you are and what you wanted to tell folks. My name is Rich Sheridan. I've lived in Dallas for 30 years. I've run for uh, political office, and I understand the politics in Dallas, Texas. Today, in The Observer, a weekly uh, publication. Turn it this way if you want to see it. Go ahead. Weekly publication about LBJ wanting for the murder of Kennedy. In today's Dallas Observer, it's free in newsstands all downtown Dallas. I was published, by the way, on Wednesday by the Dallas Morning News called an extremist. Let's hear it for the extremists. Yeah! Who are the extremists? The lying politicians, the media, or the extreme truth that we're giving out there to counter their lies? And if I could just may say this. Assassinated, John F. Kennedy, assassinated in Dallas, Texas on November 22, 1963 by a cabal of fascist, racist, military, industrial, oil complex warmongers. JFK's assassination began the death of democracy in our nation. Let's come together on the occasion of JFK's 50th memorial, share our truth, expose all the conspirators, and be part of the rebirth of democracy and part of the na our nations and world's new Peace Corps. Let me quote a former mayor about the cabal that runs this city. 
Former controversial mayor, Laura Miller, who had her own battles with the, this cabal as mayor, wrote this in the Dallas Observer about today's political offspring of the cabal that also controlled Dallas at the time of JFK's assassination. Quote, the Dallas Citizens Council, the Dallas Citizens Council that resides in the tallest building in Dallas on the 62nd floor, an elite cadre of wealthy goons, greedy and egotistical, who have taken advantage of the city through tax breaks and public land deal, deals, and it was started by a former mayor, R.L. Thornton, and KKK member in 1937. Very interesting. Thank you very much. All right, again, we salute you all for being out here. Sir, I talked to you last night. Come be on the radio with us. How are you doing? Tell us uh, where you came from, what you're doing here. I came here from Florida to be here, part of this, uh, thanks to you, and uh, uh, to stand up for, for the freedoms that we're losing in this country every, every, every second, really, it seems like. And... Uh, I couldn't have done it without you, and I appreciate oh, everything you do. No, don't thank me. I want to be thanked, but I have to thank you because, for me personally, just because for waking me up to some of the things that I've uh, was asleep to, and and the health things, and a lot of the other issues. Like I take the tangy tangerine, and I'm on the nation night, and just all those factors that I didn't really know about uh, has really helped me a lot. And I really appreciate everything you you guys and your crew has done, and uh, I'm just glad to be here with everybody and. Uh, it's been a wonderful experience so far. What do you make of their attempts to try to block out free speech in this town? I mean, it really shows that if they could, just like people that run this government, all the countries they take over, they put dictators in, they, they put oppressive systems in. So if they can do it here, they will, and they are. The bad guys run the country. I mean, it's a fact that every major dictator, when, when the United States government has a choice, they put dictators in. They oppress and steal because it's not the government, because we the people have let... Total criminals take over. And it's never been perfect. It's been bad throughout history. All governments end up being bad. It's just that now they say, no, governments are never bad, so we can't even have a debate about fixing it. See how fundamental that is? Jim Mars is here. We're going to talk to him in a second. What do you think about that? Well, uh, it's, uh, you're, you're accurate that, that they will do that, and they have done that. I was down there uh, at the gate handing out flyers early this morning, and I got accosted by a couple of those guards or whatever you want to call them, asking me what I was handing out and why. And, um, question. Wait, wait, this is key. This is key testimony. I want to shoot this in high def because this happened to our reporters when they didn't have cameras on. As soon as we turn cameras on, they back off. The police threatened to arrest us on tape or give us tickets, but as soon as more cameras got there, they back off. They know it's illegal, unconstitutional, but they're afraid of us in a group and they're afraid of cameras. But when they've got you individually, describe, sir, what happened to you, where you were, and what they did because this is how they want to turn America into a giant non-free speech zone, an anti-free speech zone, a constitution free zone. Tell us exactly what happened. Well, I was handing out flyers down by the main street uh, gate, I guess, the, where they're letting the press people in. And as I was doing that, I was talking to people and explaining to them, don't believe the, the official story. One of the guys, it looked like, uh, and he had a red, red suit on. He came over to me and asked me, what are you handing out? And I, I gave it to him and he said, you can't do that. I said, why? I said, because you're not allowed to. And then uh, I said, well, I'm going to keep doing this. And then the, he went over, and I saw him talk to a police officer who both looked at me. And uh, I'm a felon from when I was 18 years old. And so I was thinking to myself, well, maybe they're going to try to, to lie or do something on me. You know I mean? You can't trust them. So I kind of just backed off a little bit, just walked away and watched them and started handing out my papers some more. And uh, the guy told me that I had to leave. The, the guy with the red shirt told me how to leave because I was filming where they said, no bullhorns, you know, what you're allowed to bring in the event. And I, but you I, weren't in it. And again, this is the key to all this in America, ladies and gentlemen. This is what it's become where there's outside of law, they're saying in America you can't talk to people and you can't hand out uh, any paperwork. I mean, that is simply, simply amazing. And I know we've got some bad audio right now. Uh, network, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, just boost it because I noticed sound levels went way down. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for standing up for freedom. Let's give a round of applause and a hooray for the thought criminal. I mean, this is so extreme. Jim Mars. Jim Mars is here with us. Uh, and, 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 sir, I've never been around such evil. Americans gathering in a square to remember a president murdered in a conspiracy, talking about freedom, handing out sheets, pointing out there's a violation of free speech, and then they come over and try to intimidate people and tell them they can't do that. I think that man should be arrested and probably executed. I mean, uh, in fact, I'm bad. I want to apologize. In fact, maybe I should cut my tongue out. I mean, this is so un-American what we're doing. You, for 45, 50 years, as a former Star-Telegram reporter, really since it happened, 
You even met Jack Ruby, knew him. How dare you report on this? How dare you question? You are an extremist. You're an enemy of Mao Zedong and Hitler. You do what government says. Do you want to apologize? Exactly. You know, what really gets me is that uh, James Tague, who was the third man wounded in Dealey Plaza, they won't let him in. Bill and Gail... Good, he should be sent to prison. Yeah, Bill and Gail Newman, the closest people to Kenny when he was shot and who within an hour of the assassination was, were on television saying the shots came from up behind them on the grassy knoll. They won't let them in. Arrest them. They're evil, too. I know. Gee, we, we, this is the thought police, you know. Well, no, once they don't let you gather, then they do come and arrest you at your house. That's the next step, folks. They want authoritarianism here. But let me tell you this. You're going to love this. I just came from inside Dilly Plaza. I just wandered on in. And got all the way down in there, and finally some minion said, hey, you don't have an armband. I said, oh, well, I must have forgot mine. Yeah, you got to have a Nazi armband to get in. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And so finally they ushered me out, even though months ago I contacted some of the organizers and said, hey, I've written about this for 50 years, and I've, uh, you know, I, I wrote the book that uh, Oliver Stone's movie was based on. I said, can I get a ticket to get in? And they said, no. <laughs> no, no, only I talk to people that go in, they have to agree that they agree with the official story. Right, exactly. Now, th this is this is 1984 Orwellian thought police. No, that's a conspiracy. Nothing bad's happening. <laughs> hey, Obamacare is free, and it works great. Hey, well, Did didn't he say, say if you like your kids, you can keep your kids? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, what's the time there, folks? Okay, we got about four minutes. We got a break. What do you make, though, uh, Jim Mars here with us? Uh, again, one of the top uh, people in the country, obviously the most well known other than Oliver Stone. And of course, you worked on that film with Robert Groden and others who's here. Groden's had to sue him to even be able to be down there on foot during the year now. So, so they, I mean, this is real draconian issues. And when we talk to the dying corporate prostitute media, they will literally laugh at us. Or. They won't laugh at us when we talk about the First Amendment. They agree and go, listen, I had a major newspaper person today in the lobby. And they said, listen, I'm here. I'm writing a piece. I'm really into what you're doing. We know the truth, but, you know, I've got to write this piece. You want to know how scary this whole thing is? Some years ago, I had a senior newspaper editor from the Dallas-Fort Worth area who sidled up to me after I had made some talks on the conspiracy to kill Kennedy. And he says, you know, I know you're right. He said, but we can't write about this. He said, it could cost me my life. Now, I don't for a minute believe, I'm not so paranoid to think that they're going to come down and kill some editor because of something they published in the paper. But the point is, this fella did. He was truly fearful for his life. Well, that's because they know how many people got killed. Who do you think contacts the Dallas Morning News? Help, they're coming after me. They just got to go, sorry, can't help you. They're here killing me. And they find the dead body. It, they just got to cover it up. They know. Exactly. I mean, a big paper knows more than the police do in a lot of cases. And they just keep it all quiet, give the police a call. All right, this person knows. Send over a black op team. Well, and I also recall that it happened to me personally and to other newspaper reporters that I know, their editors would say, hey, it's not our job to investigate the Kennedy assassination. And, of course, I wanted to scream at them and say, well, then whose job is it? Oh, tell the story about who was in uh, owning the paper or whatever and, and uh, uh, at the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. You told that story, and then you weren't allowed to report on something. I, I, I forget the details. Oh, well, there, there were several. First off, a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people, especially in Fort Worth, know who Eamon Carter uh, Junior was. Uh, he's the one that took over and was owner of the Star Telegram. Uh, up to within two weeks of the assassination, uh, he had a day nurse that was taking care of his children. Her name was Marguerite Oswald. Okay, and a lot of y'all remember Tommy Vandegriff. Okay, and then went on to be a congressman, mayor of Arlington forever, ever had Vandegriff Chevrolet. Uh, she, uh, Marguerite Oswald, worked for Tommy Vandegriff. This is how well connected the Oswalds were, but you never get told this stuff. No, they were they're living with the white Russians, allowed to go to Russia and come back, CIA clearance, uh, spy plane bases, but nothing's going on. Nothing's going on, although his wife, Marina, told me that when they came back from Russia, they made a three-day stopover in Amsterdam, something that has not been reported by the government story. And I said, well, what was going on there? She said, well, we stayed at a private home where everybody spoke English. And uh, CIA safe house. You know, exactly. I can't tell this story. I can't tell this story because of doctor, you know, patient privilege. But, you know, my dad was a dentist here. And the craziest thing is he never even told me. He goes, oh, yeah, I, you know, I had a certain patient 
who was that certain person, but I can't say any more than that. It's pretty wild. It's pretty Very small world. Very small world, and there's a whole lot of connections in on the assassination, which is why I think you're seeing this debauchery towards the Constitution in Dallas today. There are still people in Dallas who have something to hide. That's right, and they can't prop it up anymore. And they think we have the whole world media out, and we and we only put out the official story and give the media a three-week, two-week, whatever it was, run-up of pure demonizing anyone that questions it. Then they can cement it back together. But that's the story of Humpty Dumpty. That's right. I think uh, up until this year, see, they weren't too concerned because they control the Dallas News. They control the Star-Telegram. They control the major newspapers. I know. I work for them. Okay, but this year, on the 50th anniversary, they knew there would be news people coming from all around the world, so they had to take extraordinary steps to right. shut everybody up. Jim Mars is here with us. Yeah, folks! Yeah! Yeah! We're going to be right back from the 50th here in Dallas on the 50th anniversary of the Black Op assassination of John F. Kennedy. The First Amendment is alive and well. Liberty is rising. We'll be back. The march starts when we come back in three minutes. The free speech march against the would-be tyrants. Straight ahead, I'm Alex Jones. Why is nascent iodine so important? Nascent iodine is so important because it goes directly to the thyroid. It's not bonded to a salt, which means it doesn't have to be broken down. And it's the most usable form. It's what the body uses. It's what the body is designed to use. If you have low energy levels, if you have pains, if you have thyroid problems, if you don't feel up to par, well, they've proven now that the fluoride and a lack of iodine causes a decreased IQ because you have all this stuff that builds up inside your system and builds up and builds up. And that's why some people, when they start taking iodine, will have what's called a Hertzheimer reaction or a detoxification reaction. But that's a good sign. That means you're detoxifying all that fluoride buildup, the mercury buildup in there, the bromine buildup in your system, and the chlorine buildup in your system. You don't want those things. All of those things have been proven as carcinogens. That's one of the reasons prostate cancer is on the rise, too, is because prostate takes up iodine and the men that are lacking iodine causes the prostate to become cystic and causes the prostate to swell and eventually leads to prostate cancer. There's been an extreme rise in polycystic ovarian disease, PCOS with women, fibrocystic breast disease because iodine is stored in the breast tissue, the ovaries, the prostate glands in men. It's utilized by every single cell in the body. Mm, why does this almost taste good compared to other iodine that tastes horrible? That's because it's real iodine atomic form. We wanted something that's going to go straight into the bloodstream and straight into the thyroid gland. We wanted to put it in a vegetable glycerin base. That's a USP kosher certified vegetable glycerin base. And that product is not tested on animals. It's vegan friendly. It's gluten free. It's GMO free. Of all the things I've done, nascent iodine was just absolutely amazing so we developed with dr group a double strength low price infowarslife.com survival shield the atomic nascent iodine available right now and in Dallas, live is Alex Jones. Now, he was just talking to Jim Mars, and Jim Mars is telling us that he got thrown out of Dealey Plaza because he didn't have an armband on. Alex, do those armbands have swastikas on them? No, they don't, but they might as well have an all-seeing eye of the New World Order. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting ready to march for the First Amendment down Main Street. It's right over here to the right, and I want to get John B. Wells and Jim Mars, everybody up here up front with me. I know you guys don't want to be up front, but hell, I want to be able to pass the microphone to you off and on and get your comments on what you're seeing and what's happening. But I tell you, it is exciting. I would rather be here with a crowd of First Amendment supporters than up there sitting on those bleachers with all the wannabe establishment people who are up there spewing their garbage. And I know when you talk to your audience of 16 million people, you're going to be talking about what happened here. In a nutshell, John B. Wells, what are you going to say? Those people sitting on those bleachers up there. It's nothing personal, but there's this thing called a Judas goat. That's the animal that leads the sheep into slaughter. You should be ashamed of yourselves towing the party line. You're supposed to be journalists. You're supposed to be interested in the truth. You're supposed to be interested in the welfare of the people. So walk the walk. We've heard enough of your talk in the talk. Absolutely. And so many of these media people behind the scenes, they either laugh at us 
But the majority of them go, no, I know what you're saying is true. I mean, major wire reporters, local newspaper person from the Dallas Morning News, you name it, tell me, oh, we know the truth, but we're not allowed to. My God, that's total evidence when there's an agenda of you will go out and you will make fun of these people. That's the proof that they would have an authoritarian regime if they could. Look at what they're doing with Obama right now on, on, on every issue, just using executive orders outside of Congress. There's this little gal named Amber Lyon. I had her on Coast to Coast AM one night. She is, uh, she is doing a, a special assignment in a not-to-be-disclosed location and a not-to-be-disclosed subject. And she is the one who came forward and said that while at CNN, they were paid to report some stories, they were paid not to report some stories. And that pretty much says it all. And guess what? CNN is moving away from news. So that's it, folks. If you get tired of something and you're sick of it, quit buying it and it'll go away. That's right. Whereas your show's rising and the whole Coast to Coast family with George Dorn and everybody just doing a great job because you'll talk about real issues. Uh, you'll talk about just all sorts of things. People want to hear more variety. Yes, they do. They, they do. And, and of course, the, uh, the label, uh, this is a country of labels. And the label is, oh, conspiracy middle of the night radio. It's harmless. It's not harmless. It's, it's, getting, it's getting exactly the right people's attention. I can't tell you how many amazing people I've met because of Coast to Coast AM and what George Norrie's done and what you've done and, 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 and Tom Danheiser and the whole team there. It's, and, and the direction George and you and others have taken it more towards a hardcore political research angle, which still some of the fun stuff. It's just so amazing. A very interesting artist. I'll just leave it at that. Last night came down, who's a big listener for five years, and she learned about what I do from Coast to Coast AM dot com and it was just amazing how many people end up finding my show over the years and infowars.com and everything through you guys and now i try to repay the favor for folks to find out about what you're doing saturday nights john b wells is here with us and again you folks are my heroes you are please don't tell me i'm doing a great job you're doing an amazing job we're going to start marching david knight you take us out to break when we come back in the next segment you can come back to me but let's start marching for the first amendment this is it I salute you, and we are not going to let them silence all of us. David Knight, what do you think of what John B. Wells said? It's pretty amazing, Alex. You know, I'm, I'm looking at some of these quotes. That, that quote we mentioned earlier that uh, Kennedy said, the word secrecy is repugnant to a free and open society. In that same speech, he said, there's a very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized on by those anxious to impose official censorship and concealment. That's exactly what's happening. He said it wouldn't happen on his watch, but he's no longer with us. And now that's exactly what you're seeing there in Dallas, and we're seeing it in spades throughout the United States. We see official censorship and concealment, the very things that are repugnant and abhorrent to a free society. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com government cover-ups and we've got one going on right now in dallas we've got the official ceremony that is commemorating the 50th anniversary of the assassination of jfk that's taking place Get ahead but it's Stop, being go too fast everybody slow down we've got alex jones live in dallas go ahead alex tell us what's going on there it's exciting well i mean this crowd is rushing forward i'm trying to get to the head of it and we got folks chanting out here i'm gonna bullhorn a little bit everybody uh, all right, folks, hold on just a minute. Hold on just a minute, brother. Hold on just a minute. Let, let's just stop up here for just a minute because I want to just say a few things to all of you here. I've thought about this really deeply, and I know how the mainstream media, corporate whores work. It is key. Let me get to the head of the crowd, and I'll turn around, folks. Everybody stop. Just I'm going to turn around right here. Great job. And let me just address everybody real quick here because this is important, some strategy planning, and for everybody listening on the radio as well. 
if you're listening to us in Dallas, you need to get down here. Get down here to where Maine runs into Dealey Plaza. They've got it blocked a few blocks off here. We're almost up to the barricades now. Now, they want to block us off because they think we're going to bullhorn over the memorial service where they have politicians get up there and spew the official story in between the news inserting their propaganda. They claim they're not being political, but then all the, the state-run media puts out the official story during the breaks. So let me play it by ear. If they try to censor us or anything, we'll start bullhorning them, but we're too far away to be heard anyways. They'll just claim that we tried to mess up the memorial service. So let's play it by ear. Let me think about it. You can do whatever you think you need to do, but once I get up there, I'll play it by ear. We may not want to bullhorn once we get up there because, again, the media will try to spin it that we interrupted the event. Regardless, at 2.30, they're supposed to let the alternative media and the real American people in, so that should be interesting. I appreciate you being out here in the cold, but let's walk real slow now and take our time marching up on the police barricades because I'm going to break here in a couple minutes. I want to be live on the air when we reach the police so we have that protection to be live on the radio and covering all this. So we're out here. You're doing a great job. I salute you all. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question, David Knight, on air. I mean, don't you think it's smart to not bullhorn once we get down there because they'll try to spin that? Oh, absolutely. They'll, they'll totally demonize you if you do that. They, everybody in the mainstream media, that's all they will show. That's the only thing they'll talk about if you bullhorn the, the event, if you bullhorn the moment of silence. And it, and it may not be a bad idea, may not be a bad idea to do it, but uh, here's the deal. I've said on record we're not doing it, and the police are listening right now. I know they are. If they mess with us, if they mess with us, the First Amendment comes first, just like the second. I'm going to have to roll over the top of them. And if they mess with us, I'm going to go over the barricades. Now, if they don't act like thugs, we'll just stop at the barricades and probably won't even bullhorn. Uh, but that's just the way it is. And so, uh, you know, we're here to promote the First Amendment, and all the tyranny and the corrupt mayor can go straight to hell. That's right. Anybody that stands with us is a freedom of liberty, whether they be police, general citizens, it doesn't matter. We're here. This is not communist China. And the people trying to censor us can go straight to Hades or straight to North Korea and suck on the toes of Kim Jong-un. All right, brother, when are we going to break here? We've got uh, about, a, about a minute. Okay, all right. Well, we will cross this barricade coming up at the beginning of the next segment. Let's start going now. Let's start going now. We are moving forward, and they're moving more police in right now. And then we're going to go to this break. We're going to slow walk. Let's slow walk it so that we have plenty of time. We're going to go to a break in a moment and then come back. This is real, unscripted, hardcore truth journalism in their face. True history happening. And we are going to resist this tyranny by coming and literally raining on their parade. And the good Lord above is certainly freezing all the blue bloods' butts up there that are sitting on those bleachers right now. We, and we the people are out here staying hungry, marching around in the cold, and it is awesome. And my crew has never done a better job than they're doing right now. As we go out to break, here's for the InfoWars crew. Yeah! Yeah! InfoWars! InfoWars! Info wars, info wars, info wars. Hello, this is Hank Hill, and I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. Infowars.com. Yeah. <laughs> My judge, what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> Infowars.com. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. We are not going to put up with the lies of the globalist anymore. We are not going to let this country become communist China. We are not going to see our free speech violated. We are not going to let the globalist have the international media here and, and attack anyone that does not believe the official story. And that is why we are here in defense of the First Amendment no more lies, no more lies, no more lies, no more lies, no more lies. Yeah, over here, no more lies, no more lies. Stay with me, Wes. The cops are right here, sure, sure. No more, let me get over here, sure. Over. No more lies, no more lies. I've got the police here with me, trying to pull me off to the side. We're going to see what happens. Stay on me, dude. Okay, right over here, the cops want to talk to you. Here we go. This detective right here. What's your name? 
Sergeant Hall. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Good. What do you want to talk about, real quick? Let's not block the street. I said, want to block the street. Police were trying to pull me off there. No more lies. No more lies. No more lies. No more lies. I'm Sergeant Hall with the Dallas Police Department. Uh, what are your plans for today? We're just gonna walk right up there to the barricade. You're gonna walk right up to the barricade. Okay. You're welcome to walk right up to the barricades. However, this is a ticketed event, okay? So you can't get past the barricades, okay? Now, you cannot have the bullhorns while you're in this area over here. We did designate an area for you to use the bullhorn, which is back over here at Main and Market here. Can anybody hear us over there, though? Yes, people can hear you over there. Free speech zone? Yes, free speech zone. It's a free speech zone, okay? What, is North Korea a free speech zone? Well, you seem real nice. Let me just do this. I'll bullhorn about three minutes, and then I'll go back over there. Sound good? Okay, here we go. All right. No more lies. 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 No more fucking lies. Are you are you going to bullhorn right here? No, I'm walking over there. Walking over where? Hold on. I can't. I barely hear it because everybody yelling. Okay. We'll need for you to to move over there, sir. I know. But why? Because the mayor didn't want anybody to hear the voice of the people. The free speech zones over there. This is a pri this is we don't a permitted zones, man. area over here, sir. I, what I thought the no no the permitted area is past the, the, the whole country. Yeah. Yeah. Over there, we have this people get searched. No, sir. Actually, the permit starts right here. But quite frankly, the mayor had said we couldn't hand out flyers anywhere in the city. Well, I don't know about that, sir. But if you're going to use the bullhorn, we'll have to ask y'all to move over there to the other side, sir. Okay. Well, if I don't stop, what is he going to arrest me? Uh. Subject to You're subject to being arrested, okay? All right. Well, I know that, but I mean, my whole issue is in Tiananmen Square, people got arrested, and they got like, if like, what would happen if 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 I got arrested? I'd be taken to loose Terry. You'd be taken into custody, yes. That's As a thought criminal. What's your name, sir? I'm Sergeant Hall. Okay. Do you believe in the First Amendment? <laughs> yes, I believe in the First Amendment. Yes, I believe in the first. You one. believe the official story of Kennedy, uh, Mr. John? I'm not even on the bullhorn now. I'm not going to debate the first amendments to you, with you, okay? I'm here to explain to you that you're at a ticketed event. You have a right to come and enter inside the zone of uh, of the event, but you cannot go past the barricades. You cannot use the bullhorn when you're in this desk. I got it. I'm just deciding what I want to do. Hold on one second. All right, I think I'm going to go in there and not use the bullhorn. Let's all march in there, but not use the bullhorn, which I already said I don't want to do because the media will say we're interrupting it. Then let's all march through. No, hold on. I got to use this. Tell them. Let's all march through, but don't use our bullhorns because they will say we're interrupting it and it'll make us look bad. Let, let's march through up to the barricade, the actual inner one, then we'll come back to the uh, Soviet zone, free speech zone, or you guys can do whatever you want. That's what I'm going to do because I don't want to go to jail today. We've already come and shown that the mayor is trying to violate the First Amendment. So we've already come here and taken back most of the First Amendment. So I'm going to march up to the um, internal barricade and the checkpoints, and then I'm going to march back out over and we'll bullhorn them. I'm so loud. Believe me, they're going to come over and try to get us to move again. So let's just go. Let's do it right now. Here we go, folks. Follow me. There's already several hundred people up there at the barricade, sir. That's been here all morning to be close by. Oh, good. Great, great. What does that mean? That they're there. I mean, oh, I don't see how you're going to make it to the barricade, but... Okay. <laughs> Come on, listen. I'll work with you guys, but let's not do the police. T I'll work with you guys, but let's not work with the tactic of getting me to agree to something and then whittling it down and down and down. No, sir. Like I said, there's already several hundred people over listen, there. Listen, this country's getting ready to collapse. You, 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 believe me, you want to be on the right side of history. All right, come on, let's go do it. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's a cute dog. Anyways, we're brought. Hey, how you doing, sir? You bet. Good to see you. You bet. Absolutely. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. We're going to talk to some news media here for a moment. You guys can carry this live if you want. Uh, but I'm going to take my headphones off here real quick. How you doing, sir? Doing good. Tell me how you're doing today. I'm doing great. It's great to be out here. Tell me about this moment. Well, we're here because the mayor said last year in the newspaper, and then he said it again. Let me start over. We're here because the mayor said last year, and then he said again uh, just last week, that we couldn't hand out flyers within 75 feet of a street or a road. We had police tell us even down here we couldn't hand out flyers a few days ago. We had our reporters threatened who were just getting up near the barricades uh, before they extended them out. And uh, we saw uh, bureaucrats trying to tell the police to arrest us yesterday. The police said, no, I'm not going to violate the First Amendment yesterday. 
And then I said, but the mayor says you're supposed to, and a senior cop said, I'm not going to do that. So we're here to force them to admit that there's been attempted violations of the First Amendment. I liken this in a small way to the great work of people like Martin Luther King, who got arrested over a hundred times going into lunchrooms and places to be able to basically eat and be treated like a human being and to be able to use bathrooms and water fountains. It's the same thing. Can we hand out flyers in Dallas? Can we have signs in Dallas? Can we march in Dallas? That's what this comes down to, and that's why we're here letting them know there's still free speech in America. Where are you headed now, Adam? Uh, I, am, I am headed down to the internal barricade. They say they're going to arrest me if I use the bullhorn. So I don't want to get arrested, and I don't want to interfere with the event they're having. But they've set this event up where only the establishment view and the view held by about 10 to 15 percent of Americans that Oswald acted alone, they've set it up where only they can have their views. And the media is running promos in between promoting the official story. So this is a giant attempt by some of the old timers in Dallas who know the world knows what they really did to prop up the, the collapsing Humpty Dumpty story that one guy did this when he was really drinking a Coca-Cola in the lunchroom. And so the lie has collapsed. We're here to retake the First Amendment. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much for talking to us. This is the fact that only the privileged get to get in there. Exactly. No, only the insiders get to get in there. David, how's the audio? Everything good? Everything sounds great, Alex. I've been arrested many times, man, but I, don't, I made a day. I made that's, a day. That's right. right. Hey, brother. You never good know. Good job. Good, <laughs> good job with that bullhorn. But remember, we're getting up there close, so we probably don't want to do it anymore unless you want to get arrested, which you may want to do, but I'm not telling you to do that. To do whatever you have to do, but I'm telling you to follow your heart. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're going up towards the barricades, and we're broadcasting on 104.1, and the establishment is, is basically putting out its propaganda. Uh, and uh, they are here with a big image of JFK on a crane hanging up. I guarantee you if JFK was alive right now, he would want the people to know why they blew his head off. Because he was signing an executive order to begin abolishing the Federal Reserve, to end the Vietnam War, and more. And the establishment and LBJ didn't want that, so they killed it. What, are they laughing at us? Well, I don't... Why do they think it's funny? Well, listen. Listen, I don't think they're against us. Let's go over and talk to them. Which one? Which one? Well, I don't think he's laughing at us. I think he agrees with the First Amendment. Officer, you agree with the First Amendment, don't you? Because you know body language is 90% of things, and you're smiling at us because you like us, don't you, sir? Anyways, uh, he is a good guy. You know you know what you got? Hey, officer, how you doing? Well, anyways, let's leave the police alone and, and, and not get into arguments with them. All right, folks, here we go. David Knight, uh, we are getting up to the final barricades where there are all these citizens here that want to be able to be part of this event but have been held back because they don't go along with the official the official story. <clears throat> and so uh, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, as we uh, approach up to the uh, front lines of this. I appreciate everybody letting me through. God bless you. Citizen Press here, Infowars.com. And these are all the people that have been kept out of here. We can see a lot of people that have been kept out. A lot of people kept right, out there. See if, you can, see if you can pick up any of this audio. If we turn up the audio, guys, see if you can pick up any of the uh, speech that's being given right now. See, see if you can carry this audio. Tell me if it's good. If not, go back to me. That prejudice can lead to openness. Make us instruments of your peace and bearers of divine justice that always tempers instincts and mercy. And again, nobody used their bullhorns up here. Not just because they threatened to arrest us, they'll, the media will turn it against us. Somebody go back and make sure that guy didn't use that bullhorn. I don't want to uh, fucking it TV. Excuse All right, me. go ahead and let me through here, man. I'm just going to pop Excuse me, man. I got Excuse me. Yes. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. Alex, do you know who's speaking there now? The mayor was supposed to speak right. just before the moment of silence, which is at 1230. We're about 10 well, minutes away. Get a video shot over this and over these police uh, right through here if you can. There it is. Uh, let's bring Josh in here. Oh, Sorry, guys. Camera I gotta guy. Where's there. Rob Dude? Rob Dude, be the best get to get in there. here because you can get a really good shot here. I, I can give you a live stream right here. Excuse me, guys. Excuse me. Hey, excuse, me. excuse me. Uh, I'm going to give you some shots. We're going to take a break. Uh, David, uh, that's probably uh, talking. That's probably uh, Bishop uh, Farrell. 
Ian, Ian, pardon me? That's probably Bishop Farrell of the Catholic Diocese of Dallas that was speaking. Now I think that's the mayor, isn't it? Yeah, that's the mayor, Rawlings. So this is the guy that set up the censorship. This is the guy that did yeah. everything that JFK opposed, he's imposed in Dallas today. The mayor of Dallas, Rawlings. Alex Jones here with a very important announcement for Truth Seekers. We've carried a lot of amazing films and books over the years on the online video bookstore at Infowars.com. And out of all the titles we've carried, one stands out because it is just so chillingly convincing. And that's Dreams from My Real Father by Joel Gilbert, available at Infowars.com. This film exposes the fraud that Obama is like nothing I've seen. If you want to know who Obama's real daddy is, this is the film for you. Don't forget, your purchase supports our broadcast and our growing media network. You'll also find it at InfoWarsShop.com, None Dare Call a Conspiracy by Gary Allen, the book that woke me up. We're also carrying Behind the Green Mask, UN Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey. This book is coffin nails to the globalist takeover. The Greater Good, the most professional and up-to-date film I've ever seen exposing the scourge that is vaccines. These titles and a lot more are all available at InfoWarsShop.com. Right now, we're coming back to the Alex Jones Show, and Alex is live in Dallas, and we have the mayor of Dallas, Mayor Rawlings, who is actually standing on the grave of JFK, and with his actions, he's doing everything that JFK abhorred. He is censoring the news, he's stifling dissent, and he's withholding from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. Those are the words of JFK, the man who was shot 50 years ago. Now we got a mayor who is doing everything that JFK hated. Alex? That's right. I want you to hear a minute of this pompous person talking about the Dallas Fathers. And he mentioned people that were around basically when Kennedy was taken out. This is all about Dallas and the good old boys that work with the CIA to kill Kennedy and then to kill our republic, literally selling their lie and their fraud. So let's uh, give you about a minute of the uh, idiot mayor speaking uh, in this uh, highly choreographed event where they openly tried to stifle free speech, but we defeated them. So let's listen to a minute, a minute of this guy. And the moment of silence is coming up. On our streams, we're going to skip our ads at the bottom of the hour for the moment of silence. Light shone upon it. The city, it was learned, had been inhospitable to honorable debate. End quote. Rabbi Olin captured the heartbreak and hurt the city felt. He stated plainly the defense. You guys getting good video from us audio? That were laid yeah. bare before the entire world. But most important, he called for Dallas to use this tragedy to right, seek I'm gonna start a talking true over transformation. Put me on. Look around. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, th th this is literally a bunch of wannabe movie stars, a bunch of nobody politicians who've never allowed a memorial here and never allowed the conspiracy research community that knows the truth to have events here officially, blocking everyone out. And, and, and creating a big Hunger Games, as David Knight calls it, propaganda event. It's totally scripted where he pauses and they show the crowd. Uh, they brought in all these school kids and we're groping them, groping their bodies, TSA style. We saw TSA out here as well uh, to get into this. So you got a bunch of school kids as props living in a country captured by foreign offshore banks as the nation is gutted. But I'm telling you, that disgusting mayor up there on the screen, he has not gotten away with shutting down our free speech. And we are here. And we are absolutely getting the word out about freedom and about what really happened to JFK. And it's just been a great example of the attempt of the state-run media to dominate society. This is a truly live event on the ground, real journalism. And I want to thank everybody that's come out. I want to thank everybody that stood up for the First Amendment and the great crew. And I want to thank all you, the listeners, more, most importantly, and God above, but, but people on this planet, I want to thank the listeners for supporting us, standing by us, putting up with me over the years. My God, I can't listen to myself half the time. And, 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 and being part of the InfoWars.com family and the InfoWars.com team, what we're doing together is so incredibly historic. This mayor has absolutely timed it where he speaks with international media watching him right up to the moment of silence. And maybe he'll... Uh, Maybe he'll uh, you know, celebrate the establishment's murder of Kennedy during the moment of silence. I mean, this is just absolutely ridiculous. But the moment of silence is coming up here. Fifty years ago, 
in my hometown long before I was born. They blew his head off in front of everybody. High noon is a message to the establishment, a message to the world that there had been a coup d'etat by the Federal Reserve, by LBJ, by Texas oil men, by big banks, and that they were going to do whatever they wanted to with America. And they claimed they were killing Kennedy to restore liberty and do all this other stuff. But they really did it to bring in tyranny. And now we see what this has done all of these years later. It is absolutely disgusting. And so that's why we're here reporting the truth, broadcasting the truth, during this outrageous propaganda event we are not standing idly by. David Knight, your comments on this as we get just minutes away from the moment of silence. We're about a minute and a half away. So, David, just talk for about 30 seconds and give us your take. Well, Alex, the hypocrisy is just amazing and disgusting. When I look at this speech that Kennedy had about the idea that secrecy is a repugnant word, that we don't want to give up our liberties and freedom in order to censor people, in order to provide security, he said that giving that up is much more dangerous than what we're being threatened with. And that's what we see today. And to see this, as you mentioned, the Hunger Games type of uh, little ceremony that they've got going there with Mayor Rawlings and his 25 prominent citizens there in Dallas. It's absolutely disgusting to think that they're standing on the grave of JFK, somebody who absolutely abhorred this kind of censorship. Now. Yes, we'll wait. Okay. Okay. You know, I don't even think this transmission is live. I just figured that out. So they could control this scene. I think it's delayed about 20 seconds. And then they show a clip. Now I understand what's going on. They show a clip. This is like a practice of control and propaganda. Then they show a clip, a space, showing uh, uh, quotes and things. Then they cut back to him. But I can see him up there still speaking. This is literally, this is even scripted and fake. Ladies and gentlemen, would you join me in a moment of silence? Here's the moment of silence. In honor of the life of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Who they murdered and killed. Of and it's not really a moment of silence, folks. They're bonging the, the bells and selling their propaganda. Look at the cops up there. They're up in that top window. Oh, there's not a moment of silence. They got the American flag up. And a cross. They only invoke that stuff at certain times. Christianity's not good unless they want to use it to make themselves God. Now the moment of silence, see? It's all scripted. America. They're killing America while I'm on air, right, guys? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, they're killing America while claiming America's mantle. That's what they do. The Patriot Act is unpatriotic. The Affordable Care Act is the opposite of affordable. See how it's all scripted, how they keep flipping back and forth in between? I'm telling you, that's got to be investigated, how this transmission went out. This is bizarre. This is bizarre. No wonder they wanted to keep the media back, the real media. Something really screwy is going on here. So this is amazing. All right, well, David Knight, they've had the moment of silence filled with images of American flags and bonging church bells, and they keep cutting the audio on and off where we're at here. Uh, something is very, very screwy, and there's no other audio coming out of other areas. Um, hmm. They're either having major technical malfunctions or this is at least 20 seconds delayed. Maybe they got the same guys that built the Obamacare website. Running the PA system. I don't know. Well, this is really a disgusting uh, scene as the establishment tries to use the person they murdered to now sell themselves as great people. And there are more police continually arriving uh, and just trying to look imperious and powerful. It is absolutely amazing. And we're here. 
uh, in Dallas. Ladies and gentlemen. They have a, they're going to have the Star Spangled Banner or something? No, now they're going to have a PBS historian of record, David McCullough. He's got a great voice. Oh, the, I don't care much for his history oh, so, lessons. So now the history lesson will tell us that Keebler elves killed Kennedy while That's acting right. alone. That's right. Let's carry that. With a vitality and sense of purpose such as we had never heard before. So we blew his head off. Young, young and now we're covering it up. If you were younger still. still. But I'm up here because I can be trusted to feed you bull. Make it a better world. And so were we. There's a lot of people here that think they're here part of something special. They don't want me to be talking. You know what? I'm going to talk. And I'm going to expose this crap because I'm sick of it. Of it was an exciting time. He talked of all that needed to be done. Of so much that matters. Again, you guys can just mix me in live with all this BS. Unity of purpose, edu education, education, the life of the mind and the spirit. You know, art. Here's something that the JFK really said, Alex. You know, he was opposing the Soviet Union. He said there's little value in opposing something like the Soviet Union, the threat of a closed society. That's what he was talking about, the Soviet Union, by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. What do we have today? Everywhere. Arbitrary right, restrictions. I want you to talk over this historian, David. Talk over the historian and give people real JFK quotes. Start over. Yeah, he said him putting he's, words in his mouth. He said there's little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. What are we seeing here? Can you see the irony of this by standing on JFK's grave and imposing arbitrary restrictions by imposing secrecy that JFK said is repugnant? You're right. You're right. It's a giant sick joke. I know we've just um, had some stations rejoin us. We skipped the break, but we're back. It's 12:34. Just a few minutes ago, they had the moment of silence that wasn't really a moment of silence. Bonging bells and and uh, other stuff. And now we're here, and they've got the PBS historian up there spewing a bunch of feel-good. Kim Jong-il loves you. The state is God. Everything's wonderful. And David Knight's really reading quotes by JFK about how we should not oppose tyranny and then become tyranny. And earlier we had a fellow reading. I remember reading that before. It's accurate. His inaugural address when he talked about fighting tyranny in America not becoming a tyranny. Because Eisenhower had warned about that. That's what the globalists were planning. There was an internal struggle within government at that time. And, and there was a struggle for the heart and soul of America. And Kennedy wasn't perfect, but he wanted his kids to grow up in a free country. And so they killed him because they wanted to be able to run things themselves. And now... The establishment is here trying to prop up the lie again. Uh, David Knight, you take over and continue for a couple minutes, and then I'll be back with more as it develops. Well, what people need to look at, they need to look at things like real history, the Operation Northwoods, which has now been declassified. That was essentially a blueprint for 9-11. Kennedy shut that down. He understood that there was a grave danger being posed to our society. And here again are his words. He said there's a very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those who are anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it is under my control. Well, he's no longer in control. He is now gone. And they are standing on his grave, imposing the very things. It's no longer a grave danger. It is now a grave reality. We see it everywhere. What would Kennedy have said about the NSA when he says the very word secrecy is repugnant to an open and free society? What would he say about the Snowden revelations? What would he say about a secretive FISA court that meets in secret without any argument either side? You have one judge, no jury. You have a decision that is issued by the FISA court that is top secret, not allowed to be seen by the society, and yet the secretive society that runs our government now, and that's what FISA is, that's what the CIA, all these organizations are. They've become the secret society that runs our government. They claim that these top secret decisions from the FISA court alter our Constitution, alter our fundamental law. That's the system we have today, Alex. Are you there? Did you want to come back? Absolutely. No, no. I was just talking to the network, telling them, 
uh, not trying to interrupt you, Tom, in a few minutes I'm going to walk out of here and go back to where they told us we could bullhorn in the free speech zone just because it's pointless sitting here. So uh, you keep uh, talking in a moment, but right now uh, while we talk, uh, I'm going to walk out of the crowd while you're talking and give people watching on Infowars.com forward slash show and on the Ustream feeds at Infowars.com uh, a shot of what's going on. But, uh, Josh, give folks one more shot down there of the controlled event uh, that they're engaged in, and then we're going to go ahead and turn around. This is the closest you can get is down Main Street. We're only about a block and a half away from the beginning of Dealey Plaza. They've got it blocked off as much as four or five blocks in one area we were at today. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and go now uh, out of here with our group that we led into here. Uh, we're entering a big crowd of uh, people crammed in. Uh, we're now uh, going to try to go past them. So, so uh, David, uh, while you do that, um, you can go ahead and take over while I leave. All right. Let's pull up for our listeners um, and people who are viewing this. Let's pull up that picture of this uh, new truck that they're selling at the Millipol in Paris. This is a military police convention, and they know who their audience is. This is what they're calling a battle net inside network. Look at this. Look at this. It looks like a cross. For those who, uh, who can't see, it looks like a cross between a Mack truck and a bus that's armored. And you've got this guy all in camouflage in an urban environment climbing into it. Now, listen how they describe this. It is the MIDS, the MIDS Tactical Command Post Vehicle, being sold to the militarized police complex now. We used to have a military industrial complex that Eisenhower warned us about, the same people that shot Kennedy. Now we have a military industrial police complex. These people are looking for new profit centers, and they're bringing the war to our urban streets. That's what this is all about when they sell these kind of vehicles. It's designed for public security missions, protection, and coordination for urban events, crisis management, and law enforcement. It even has its own little mini drone that can provide visibility one kilometer ahead and collect images in real time to be fed back to this battle net inside network. Now understand, this is something that is being sold for the police. This is something that's going to be used in our cities, and they call it a battle net inside. Say they're bringing the war home to our shores. That's right. They've... Go ahead, Alex, you want to talk? You're absolutely right. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes, I just heard you talking about BattleNet. That's right. These Homeland Security grids that they're putting in place, they call BattleNets. And I remember over a decade ago reading MIT Magazine. I showed it on air on my local TV show, talked about it on radio. And they said, what we're deploying uh, in Iraq, this was like in 2003, if I remember correctly, right when it started 10 years ago, is a battle net of cameras, sensors, checkpoints, and we're going to use this on the American people, and this is a mm -hmm. laboratory. Yep. That's how evil the system is, mm -hmm. is they admit that it's literally a battle net with the criminal banks on top, the, the feds under their control, captured and occupied, and then police under that, literally trained that we are insurgents because we want freedom. So the criminals in government and the criminal interests declare those of us that aren't traitors, that aren't criminals, to be the enemy. Then you've got all fascists that, that are addicted to government money and don't feel like they have any other life, who then see those of us that want to cut off the blood supply like a cancer, that, that see somebody wanting to cut it out, they see us as the enemy. Even though they bring down every country, even though this syndrome has happened hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times throughout history, this just goes on and on and on and on. And when I cut away from you leaving in the crowd, there was um, some trendy uh, uh, authoritarian that ran over and got in our face and thought we were alive and was cussing and screaming, uh, basically trying to provocateur that we'd done something wrong. And, 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 and this is the type of stuff they do. But I believe they said right over there is the so-called free speech. A free speech zone? And I actually <laughs> asked them that. As, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We're going to show the free speech zone kind of as a joke. I know the police are listening on 104.1 up there. So if those guys would send one of their minions out here, because uh, you're minions too, you're minions under this system, and your children have no future, the cancer viruses and their vaccines, you're being killed by eugenics, they write books on how they're doing it to you, and then you're up there laughing. Well, that's why your kid can't talk. That's why, that's why so many of you that work for the system have your wife's dying young, you're going to die young, and you will go to your grave worshiping the government. I understand that. So take all the cancer viruses. Anyways, saw some cops laughing, listening to 104.1. I mean, do they understand? What have you noticed? What have you seen 
while you've been out there? Well, it seems like every event we go to, there are police up in the window, up in that major red building right next to the stage. There are about 20, 30 police officers in every single window, all staring at you, pointing at you, taking out their cell phones, walkie-talkies, filming the whole thing. I took out my... Even though I'm well known for always doing exactly what I say I'm going to do and told them exactly what I was going to do. But see, they lie so much in the culture, the higher you go up, that that's just impossible that anybody can be truthful. Not to mention, I mean, you could have went down there with a bullhorn. It would be legal under the Constitution, but we were nice to the police because they were being somewhat reasonable, even though the guy didn't comment when you asked him if he supported the First Amendment. And they're just acting like we are complete and utter criminals as these literal criminals go up there and spew. Well, that's it. The higher level you went up, they were, the more they were laughing and showing disdain that we dare scum show up and have a birthright for their children. Apologize. We should be North Korea. Well, you know, something else interesting happened, too. I have an earpiece then to try and hear you sometimes when I hook into the jack so I can, you know, speak live via Skype and stuff. And some of the police officers saw the piece in my ear, and they were, like, literally, like, bowing down. Like, they would they'd give me nods and stuff, like, give me a pass and everything. They think I'm high-level CAA or something. And we, Well, you do look like that. Yeah, totally. But I, it just shows they have really no idea what they're doing. I'd be walking around with a sign, and they, they're so clueless. They'd see the, the piece of my... Well, the truth is we've been running an operation having a bunch of Keystone cops stuff ourselves. The truth is no one knows what they're doing. That life is crazy. And the establishment thinks with bioweapons, chem weapons, all these war systems funding al-Qaeda, they're going to keep control of things. They're not. America is imploding. America is falling apart. The whole world sees it. We've lost the moral high ground. And I'm here trying to get it back so that my kids and everybody's kids have a future. And by and large, the police have been pretty good overall. I don't want to bash them. But when you go up to the front, they're bugging their eyes out at you. Like, they're going to intimidate me not to bullhorn. I almost bullhorned because they did that. That mayor, though, is a complete tyrant. Well, that mayor is a tool bag. Let's talk about that scumbag. You notice how he, he got it all where, where he talks right up to the top? So he has the moment of silence? Exactly. And he also was saying how everything is so great. You know, he should, almost should have got the bullhorn out of his part. It was just so degenerate and so disgusting, talking about how we've recovered as a country, now we're better than ever, and honoring JFK. It's all complete bogus. And, and not to mention that the sound feed just kept cutting out and everything. This is typical government operation right here. The police <laughs> scurrying everywhere while the whole operation is failing at the root of it. As if it's, it's like Obamacare. Exactly. We're just like citizens going, we want free speech. I'm on record at every demonstration telling people, you know, Internet website. That's what the British government let me in to do all that because I told them. I just put out an article saying, here's what I'm going to do in England. Let me in. Leave me alone. It'll be fine. You won't look like idiots. They were smart enough to leave us alone. They were smart enough to do that, too. But I hope they did it for the First Amendment. And not because they realize it would blow up in their face. But see, I win either way. They either do the right thing because they don't want to be slaves, want to live in a free country, or they don't do the right thing and we, we get even more attention of the tyranny. You see, that's how that works. By not resisting, we lose. That's why I say resistance is victory. You resist, no people that keep resisting can ever be conquered. And we need to realize that. We're not rolling over. Just a little bit of resistance and it's over. You don't even have to do that much. Just don't. Bust your ass for the system anymore. Don't comply. Stop going along with it. That's how we bring them down. Well, there's one more. Yeah, good job, folks. Yeah. When we were in the back there behind the stage where all the peons are supposed to go that aren't allowed to have free speech, I noticed something. When we walked in, all the mainstream media was converging on it. And I would come up to them, and they would have taken photographs, say, what are you with, ABC? What are you with, NBC? They were coming to us. They were leaving the actual event, the footage of the actual event, to film us take pictures of us because this is where the real actual resistance and information is those speeches up there are complete dribble they're com nonsense that's right now where did they say this free speech zone is because i need i know the police are listening on 104.1 all right well uh, i know i'm being sarcastic i know they, they just said we have to go over there to bullhorn so um it's just abs because they tried to put it over there so it can't make it around the building it's ridiculous anyways i want to find that one cop it's my friend I want him to come on the radio with me. David Knight, we're going across the street here. Do you have anything you'd like to add to what you're hearing here? Yeah, I'd like to see what a free speech zone looks like. You know, if you put free speech in a zone, if you put a cage around it, if you put pins around free speech, it's not free, is it? It's controlled. If speech is controlled, it well, is not exactly. free. They always put it in a box like it's dirty. That's right. And they, and they exclude it away from the event, whether it's a political That's convention anymore. Whether it's a political convention or whether it's well, something I mean, I like this. I want to look at these people that actually... I want to look at these people, I'm not knocking them, that actually went in the free speech zone. I want to be clear. I'm not coming over here to actually do what they said and get in their little, little free speech zone like we're dirty and we're bad. I'm over here to show how they're trying to put free speech 
literally in a cage behind a thing saying, here, here, because you sued thousands of times when they tried to ban free speech, period, after 9-11, uh, you can now go into a box and speak. I mean, this is incredible. That's like, like, that's like going to a zoo. A larger issue here. Alex, that's like going to a zoo and looking at the animals in the cages and saying, look at all the free-range animals. Free speech is that's not right. in look a cage. Free people here. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely amazing, ladies and gentlemen. And, of course, the police, when I first got here, wanted to drag me off to some corner, like grab the leader. And, of course, you know, the real leader, JFK, they just blew his head off. That, that worked a lot easier. You know, I made the point, too, that I, don't, I would be ready to die for free speech. I wasn't predicting I would actually get shot or anything here. And, of course, the Dallas Observer, who we've been very nice to, wrote some sniveling attack piece of dribble. Because even the so-called alternative paper... Uh, you know, is so authoritarian leftist that how dare Alex Jones come down here when I'm the real liberal, ladies and gentlemen, like Thomas Jefferson. Absolutely incredible that all of this is going on and happening. Uh, but we're continuing to transmit here, and we are continuing to talk to the crowd, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to some of the people that are, that are here today. And uh, technically, now I'm going to go ahead and start bullhorning a little bit. You might want to step aside, do it, sir. Do it, do it. Here we go. No more lies! No more lies. 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 <coughs> no more lies. 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 Let's say it slow. Let's say it slow. Hold on one second. We gotta say it real slow. Hold on one second. No more lies. 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 For those of you just tuning in, this is Alex Jones live at the JFK assassination commemoration where they've excluded Stop people the and put them in free speech Stop zones. Stop the cover up! 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 We are awake! We know the truth! We're live with Alex Jones in Dallas protesting the censorship and the cover ups going on today, the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination. yourselves what are you doing in this time of great challenge what are you doing to unlock minds Alex Jones live in Dallas protesting the censorship, the official suppression of news. This has been going on for 50 years. It isn't just a commemoration of 50 years after the assassination of Kennedy. They've been suppressing and censoring information about that for 50 years. And to top it off, this year we have the most censorship. Blocks have been, uh, they've, they've moved the people who wanted to talk about anything other than the official story blocks away from where the official dog and pony show, the Hunger Games ceremony is being conducted. And Alex Jones is there in a free speech zone. They've got free speech caged into a little area there, but Alex is letting them have it with the full bullhorns. Let's go right to that event. We got Alex live there with the crowd. I salute you all for standing here for the First Amendment. You are incredible. Yeah. What's that, David Knight? We're live, Alex. We got you on. Okay, good. Are we back from break? Yep. What time is it? It's uh, 12.55.
All right. Well, this is historic. Where's my other reporters? I want to get their take on things. Where's uh, Darren McBreen? And then we got right here, we got the one, the only, Anthony Gucciardi. What do you think of this? It's pretty historic. This is massively historic, ultimately because it's a 50th anniversary and they're trying to make it so that they're acting as if JFK would support what they're doing. We're here with the real truth media showing the spirit of JFK, the spirit of 1776, and plowing through their rhetoric and lies. To... Crashing through the lies and disinformation. Do you think the establishment likes it? Absolutely not. That's why they're barricading it off. That's why the media reluctantly are coming here to cover us and actually abandoning the main event because this is what people care about and they're so angry about that fact. <laughs> Resistance is victory. That's right. The key to the bullhorn, I noticed, you have to scream into it. Freedom! 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 The answer to 1984 is 1776. 1776, 1776, 1776, 1776, 1776, 1776, 1776, 1776. Here, hold this mic. I'm out. I know what to do. They want to stick us over here to block our sound. But if I can actually hoist this up, I can get even more sound out of them. I can aim right over these people's heads. <laughs> triangulate it right into the thing. Yeah. Freedom! 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 Ah! Freedom! Freedom! Yeah! Freedom! 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 You folks are awesome. Fight for freedom, baby. You're asking my next move, man. I'm pretty tired. I don't know. What, what do you think we ought to do? <laughs> Anyways, Anthony, uh, Knight, you want to take over for a minute? Sure. We're live with Alex in Dallas, and they're in the free speech zone that the mayor has graciously allowed them to get quite a distance away from the official ceremony and have their say. And they're going to, after they've all cleared out, after all the uh, royalty, the people who have gotten their permits and their tickets in advance, they're going to graciously allow some protesters to go and pay their respects 50 years after JFK was assassinated on this day. And we've seen nothing but official lies and cover-ups for five decades, topped off by Mayor Rawlings closing down all of Dallas to any free speech, anyone who questions the official narrative, they're not allowed. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. We have an official censorship, an, offic an official concealment still going on today. Never been more so than at this, uh, this ceremony that's been devised by the current mayor of Dallas, Mayor Rawlings. And Alex is up there to protest the infringements on free speech. And they're trying to claim that this is what JFK would want. It is absolutely the opposite uh, David, of what JFK wanted. I, I can hear you. For a few minutes, can you hear me? I can hear you. We're back, Alex. Go ahead. You got the floor. Okay, great. Yeah, they had me muted or something. I, I'm going to start calling you guys on the cell phone because I'm, I'm out of contact with you. I don't know. I was just talking for like three minutes. Nobody could hear me. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're out here, and I like that idea. Impeach Obama! Impeach Obama! Impeach Obama! Right. Impeach Obama! Impeach Obama! Impeach Obama! Impeach Obama! Impeach 
Arrest George W. Bush. Arrest George W. Bush. Arrest George W. Bush. Arrest the entire criminal cabal. Arrest all the globalists. Bring them in before grand juries. They've all committed treason under the New World Order against this country. And we are done with it. And we know they're staging false flags. And we're aware of what's going on. We're aware of what's happening. And we aren't standing for it anymore. Now, I want to go over here and talk to the police on a live feed, and I want to find out right now if the event's over, because supposedly, coming up, citizens are going to be able to go in there now that they've had their little fake event. So let's go talk to them. David, again, uh, I, I just you can take over for a minute here, but only about 30 seconds. I want to talk to the people at the network. I want to talk to them and sure. see if technically they're able to hear me. Sure, I've got it. You know, we have... Mayor Rawlings standing up there telling us, and we have the official story from uh, me? David McCullough. Yeah, I, I'm just going to really, I really want to talk to the guys in the studio. That's all I want to do, off air. Okay, am I live here, guys? Okay, I, I just want to be able to talk to them. You can do the show, David. All right. I want to talk to them. Got it. Well, you know, Mayor Rawlings is there. They have their little dog and pony show. They've got David McCullough from PBS telling us what the JFK administration was about. But we have JFK's words. We know what he said. We know that he believed that secrecy was repugnant. And listen to what he had to say. He said, no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, that would include people like Mayor Rawlings in Dallas. He said, none of these people, any, anybody, civilian, military, high or low, should interpret my words as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. We have facts that we deserve to know. We need to know, even if it was mistakes. We don't believe it was mistakes. A lot of investigation has been done. But we need to know what happened there. And a lot of people have tried to get at that. We still have a lot of classified documents we've not been allowed to see. But for 50 years, they've been covering up this assassination. And now they've pushed everybody blocks and blocks away from their official ceremony where they pretend to honor the legacy of JFK. But we know what he stood for. We know what he stood against. And that's what we're standing against right now. Alex, you ready to come back? Is he back? Does he want to talk? Okay, I think he's still preparing things. Okay, he's com he's coming back online. All right, guys, sorry, I just lost control, uh, lost connection to the network. They're doing a great job. Do technical difficulties, but this is real media out here in the trenches with all these great citizens standing up for the First Amendment. This is so incredibly historical, and we salute everyone that's out here. It's simply amazing, and I'm told uh, from our IT folks that we crashed the YouTube. YouTube's we had a million viewers on Ustream, and it crushed. <laughs> we we took it down. One million viewers on Ustream. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at infowars.com slash show. to Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here in Austin, and we have Alex live in Dallas at the JFK commemoration of the 50th anniversary of his assassination. And what we see there is a dramatic contrast between the secretive and closed society that JFK opposed on every issue, every speech that he gave, he was against the kind of secrecy and censorship that we see happening in Dallas. And we see a contrast between the controlled ceremony, the controlled media, and the authentic media. And right now we've got Alex on the square with the crowds. Alex? We confirmed, thank you, we confirmed by Lewis there at the office who does a lot of the social network stuff, and he's got screenshots of it. We're going to do an article of it later. One million continual viewers <laughs> on Ustream alone, and then they had to turn our channel off, I guess because of bandwidth. We have some backup channels uh, right now uh, that we've got, but, but Ustream, that's like when we sent Watson and Aaron Dykes to Switzerland <coughs> two years ago. They had three and a half million viewers over the two days. 
It's like you hit that zeitgeist. And of course, we have that on the regular radio audience, three million a day, and that's great. They're the folks that help us do everything, and it's a key. But they're the choir. It's when we go out. I mean, I don't know if DrudgeReport.com or what happened. As I'm out here on the street, I don't know how we got a million on UStream. Like NASA barely gets that. You know, when they're like landing on Mars or something and use UStream. So we need to get all the UStream. We have the owner's name. He's a fan. It must have been, it probably had a setting in there. I don't think he would turn it off on us. We need to call him and get that stream with a million people on it simultaneously. People tuning in and out. I mean, that would have been tens of millions. Imagine the mainstream media can't even get a few million viewers <coughs> for their average channel, nationally, internationally. We're here with 3 million listening on the radio over the next three hours, 3 million listening a day on average, 15 million a week. This is so exciting, and all of you are out here. It is amazing. And meanwhile, it looks like they've they've, they've ended the ceremony, so I'm going to try to find some police here uh, so that I can find out exactly exactly what's going on. Hey, officers, how you doing? I need to talk to whoever's in charge. It was, that, it was a, a sergeant uh, earlier. Uh, can you guys tell me who's in charge? Oh, well, none of the police will talk to me. I want to make that clear because because I'm out here just doing this. The crowds have left. We're now here. The police run from us. And I guess they've been told not to talk to anybody. And so I know they're up there watching us, wanting to know what we're doing. We're wanting to talk to you. That's what we want. And uh, we're wondering, the crowds have all left. I mean, I thought this went to 2.30, and then they were going to let our group in to Dealey Plaza. But if it's already over, and, and while I'm still live on air, I want to be able to go back on air. Now, I'm probably going to get the silent treatment when I get over here, but I forget his name. It was Sergeant something. It was a black guy. He said he would arrest me if I used a bullhorn when I'm over here up against the fence, which is not my plan to interrupt this, this, the ceremony, because then I, the media would spin that against us. I probably should have interrupted it. It's immoral to let him sit up there and lie and do this, but I didn't want to fall into the trap, so I was not even intending to do that. And so now I'm here, and uh, the memorial looks like it's over. Like the Jumbotron's gone, and, uh, I mean, that's all she wrote. So I'm just going to try to find out. I mean, I'm on 104.1. I know the police are all listening. I want to know when we're going to be allowed uh, into the deal uh, so that uh, so I can find out what's going on. Hi, guys. Can I talk to the public affairs person or whoever it is? Because they told us when it was over we could go in there. That's been in the news. And in about 30 minutes, they said there's a ceremony. We're asking the best place to go in. Sir, how are you doing? Good. Right now, you can't go in. Uh, and right now, I'm in charge. So. Sure, sure. What's your name, officer? Lieutenant Pendleton. Well, thanks for your help. Uh, okay, well, when will we get told, and where do we go in? That I'm not sure, but for right now, you cannot go in. But it is <laughs> over now. Hang on one second. That's my fault. Okay, <laughs> right up there. <laughs> Just, I mean, come on, man. The thing's over. We need to go in. They, they, they told us, the police department told us a week ago when we called them that after it was over at 2, we could go in, and we could go in at 2.30 into the main thing for a moment of silence. COPA threatened a lawsuit. It's been in the Dallas Morning News. You guys know about that. So, so it says, all right, on the cell phone, just listen to 104.1. As you're, I know you're up there listening. You can hear exactly what we want to do. So we just want to lead our people in there now so that we can uh, then go back to the hotel and eat lunch. So we, if we can get this done early, it'll be good. You guys can go eat lunch. We will leave after you let us go in there and talk for 20 minutes. Anyway, syndicated radio broadcast. We're up here at the uh, line. He's coming back. Looks like he might tell us something. Oh, there's the guy. No, that's not him. Anyways. Well, yeah, he told him not to let us in because he doesn't know what to do yet. Just go read the newspaper. They already said we could come in when it's over. No, 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 no. They can't. Anyways, uh, we're here broadcasting live. <laughs> and the thing's already over. It, uh, it'll just take the bureaucracy a while to figure out what's going on. David Knight, uh, give us your take on all this. How creepy is that, Alex? They they won't talk to you. Our public servants won't talk, but they just watch and listen for the most part. You did get one guy saying you can't go anywhere. You can't go in. You got to be kept out of there, I guess, until they get the royalty out. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, Mayor Rawlings and his uh, prestigious group of elite. There's Anyways, little 25 people. They got to get out of there first. Absolutely. Well, you're doing a great job up there, and I just want to say that because the team has all done such a great job. This has been kind of crazy and Keystone Cop of us as well, but it, it's what re it's what reality looks like. Yeah. And we're just out here trying to cover the story. 
and becoming the story. T total gonzo journalism. It's over. The crowds have basically 95% left. There's almost no one here now, and we are still locked out of it. Uh, even though there were lawsuits that were filed, but then they withdrew them and they promised that after the ceremonies we would be let in. By 2 o'clock, technically, they said it was over. but it, it's it, so, so we still have time to be let in, but it's over. Might as well be let in now. But I don't want to obsess over that all day. What do you make, David, of, of a million people on our one Ustream account, not to mention the 3 million radio listeners? I mean, we are the dominant media now. And, and so... That's right. They don't want they don't want a controlled dog and pony show. You know, just as Anthony Gucciardi pointed out, they can't even they can't even pull that off. They keep losing the audio feed. But nobody's interested in this controlled bunch of speeches and songs and the Dallas Symphony Orchestra playing. They want to know what's really going on. The real story here is how they're censoring free speech, how they're controlling debate how they're trying to silence everybody, how they're caging people into free speech zones. This is something they've been doing at political conventions for the last couple of presidential elections, and it's absolutely disgusting. The ACLU's got lawsuits outstanding about this. They put people in cages at the presidential nominating conventions, and this is exactly. happening now everywhere, and it's absolutely disgusting, and people want to see this live. That's why they're flooding Ustream. That's why they're crashing Ustream. That's right, because they can't get the real feed anywhere else. That's right. And by the way, I know we've got a million plus people visit InfoWars.com a day, but I wonder why that one stream went over a million, now we're told, over a million at one time. Uh, I mean, is the MightyDrudgeReport.com linking to us? I wonder if that's what did it. It is just amazing. No, there's no, there's no link even, from Drudge right now. That's without a link from oh, Drudge. Wow, so it's just organically, just through InfoWars and the uh, radio audience. All of that happened. I just lost my feed. Okay, I'm good. I'm still on. Great. Uh, in fact, guys, let my let my uh, audio guy in here with me. Thank you so much. Great job. You know, Alex, Fantastic. people are, people are starved for information that isn't controlled. As we said yesterday, controlled speech is not free speech. People want authenticity. They want real news. They want to see what's happening on the street. What's happening on the street is how the ordinary people, how the public is being caged and kept out. How the debate about what happened, the investigation about what happened. Fifty years later, is still being silenced. Is still being well. That's set right. Aside. I mean, you just made the point. That's why we had a million people watching on UStream until it went down. That's why we have three million listeners a day. We're not. I mean, I'm not even that good. It's that everybody else is sold out. Everybody else takes orders. Everybody else lets them tell you Obamacare is free, and then it's not free. It doubles the prices, and they go shut up, conspiracy theorist. I mean, we're living in a total and complete fantasy land, and the BS and the lies does not work anymore and that's why we're here broadcasting live worldwide on AM and FM stations across the United States and you know I don't have an affiliate in Dallas anymore the 10,000 watt we have for about four years uh, changed formats uh, but we're about to get a new station in Dallas but that's why we rolled in with a micro transmitter to cover about a 10 mile area well so that we could point out that the people can take action against tyranny 104.1 that by the way is not interfering with any commercial stations we picked the only clear frequency that's there and that's a whole other issue. About 10 years ago or 11 years ago, they passed a law that there were all these extra frequencies for translators that were supposed to go to community groups and other things. They didn't. They all went as like uh, uh, repeaters for big establishment stations. And so that's why it's more important than ever that we keep the Internet free and alive because as the real alternative media rises and crushes the establishment, they are moving in with systems to try to censor it. SOPA and CISPA and the cybersecurity legislation, all the rest of it, that even CBS News admits is Internet killing. But the people have a taste for freedom now. They have a taste for alternative information, and they've decided the alternative is now the choice and is now dominant. And the dinosaur media is scared to death. They know we have a bigger audience than them on average. They know they can't shut us up. They know we're waking up, and they know Americans will come out in the rain for the First Amendment and free speech that our forebears fought for. And we salute you for being here. We are here to promote the Bill of Rights and Constitution. We are here to promote basic liberty. And again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have been told that, that, that we're supposed to be able to go in there when the event is over and this is this is now basically the beginnings of a betrayal of that of course what did they do when the people dropped the lawsuit they said you can come in after the event and then now it's over and now we're not being let in everything we
Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. It's a cold, rainy day in Dallas on this 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination. And Alex Jones is there live confronting the lies and the conspiracies that have been going on now, the cover-ups for 50 years. Alex? And we're here, and, and, and what the court said, and the agreement was that once it was over, they'd let us into the main area, and then at 2.30 we can go into the ceremony and have our own ceremony. But the local police don't even know what we're talking about, so... We're all standing out here in the rain. I just want to salute all the people uh, that are here standing in the rain. I want to salute you all for standing in the rain for the First Amendment and for the basic liberty and freedom of this country. And we have an agreement with the city that when the ceremony is over, we can get into the main area and then at 2.30 into the actual uh, internal area. And we'd like, under the First Amendment, for the people in the city to do what they said they do and just let us get over there so we can get under shelter and then go do our own memorial so we can then get back out of the rain. If not, we can just stay here. That's fine, too. The point is, is that we came here for the First Amendment. I wasn't going to come to Dallas, even though it's my hometown, for the 50th anniversary, because everybody I know knows that criminal elements of the government killed John F. Kennedy and then killed his brother and killed Martin Luther King. But the bottom line here is that when I heard the mayor and actually saw him on national TV saying, we're going to have a classy event, no conspiracy people. A conspiracy person is someone that doesn't believe known certified liars and that knows how to use their own brain. You know, when we said that Obamacare was written to double your premiums and kick people off, we read the bill, we got called conspiracy theorists. I got called that on MSNBC, and it all came true because I was reading the bill. Okay, if reading a bill means I'm a conspiracy theorist, that's great. The system is discredited because they've been caught lying so much. <clears throat> and that's why we're now here today to reclaim the First Amendment. We are now here today to let the establishment know that we are awake and aware of what's going on and that we will not relinquish any of the Bill of Rights or Constitution ever, never. We will never relinquish any of it. Not the first, not the second, not the fourth, the fifth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth. We're not giving any of it back. Hey, how about we get rid of the other part of the Bill of Rights that ended slavery, you know, because they're getting rid of everything else. This is insane, and we're here as a real civil rights movement reclaiming the right of free speech, and we stood up to the mayor and his attempts to block free speech. And I know that the Dallas police also didn't energetically follow the unconstitutional orders, so that's good. Their children might grow up in a halfway free country. We are all here to promote the Bill of Rights and Constitution. We are here to keep basic American freedom alive, and I again salute the crowd that has been standing in the rain. You are awesome! Ladies and gentlemen, we're broadcasting live for the 50th anniversary of JFK in Dallas, Texas, if you just joined us. And we have absolutely uh, just massive viewership, readership, and... Uh, Folks tuning out of the radio right now, uh, every one of our barometers, every one of our gauges just shows masses of new people coming to InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. We are fighting on every single front. We are fighting for basic human dignity here, and this is so historic what's happening right now. And i got to say, I mean, it absolutely blew up, and the mayor and the local CIA Dallas folks uh, totally blew up in their face on every front absolute victory against this tyranny and I just again everybody out there I just keep thanking people this has been awesome and it makes me proud to be an American here today to know that we're out here in the rain with the greatest of, of, of liberty lovers defending defending the First Amendment. I mean, it all begins with the First Amendment because without that, you have nothing. Look at Tiananmen Square. David Knight, I know you're taking us out to break, but uh, just look at this feed here of us, of these great folks out here in the rain. It's pretty cold there, isn't it? I hear it's 35 degrees, and you've got a large crowd of people standing in the rain to assert their First Amendment rights.
That's really cr Absolutely. commendable. That's what we're doing, David. Yeah, that's really commendable. You know, it's amazing to see how the city of Dallas and how the American government has turned liberty and freedom on its head. When we come back right after the break, I'm going to give you a quote from JFK. It's something that he said about the Soviet Union, but I want you to listen carefully to it and think if it doesn't sound more like a description of our current government. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and this is the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination. Alex is live in a freezing cold and rainy Dallas. He's exercising his First Amendment rights, and they've just been led into an area where they're going to, they're, they've held him out for the entire day. Now they've opened up the gates and they're walking in. But just before the break, I told you I was going to come back with a quote from JFK, and I want you to listen to this quote. And I want you to keep in mind that this was said about the Soviet Union at the time of JFK, but I want you to think about the NSA. I want you to think about the secretive FISA court. I want you to think about the Obama assassinations and listen to what he said about the Soviet Union at that time. Ask yourself if that doesn't apply today to our government. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. Is that our government today, 50 years after JFK was assassinated? I think so. Alex, you're getting in now, right? Uh, well said. No, 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 no. They're gonna, that's what they originally said with the court. We're let in here at, at, after the thing, then we're let in there with, uh, at 2.30. At it doesn't matter, there's nothing to see anyways. So now we're here. That's great. Public, public streets and free speech. Roman Praetorian <laughs> the maneuver. <laughs> Anyways, at least you got warmed up, though, huh? Anyways, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're here. Uh, the, the, the mainstream corporate whore media, uh, the uh, state-run media. Um, well, you, anyways, the state-run media. Just get over here, Jacobson. Good job, Jacobson. Anyways, the, just had a little. He's just, <laughs> anyways, the point is is that we're out here, and I'm kind of all over the map because it's crazy. i got a lot I want to say about the state-run media. But I'm sure the head cop let us in. They probably didn't know we were coming over. That's why they're all freaking out. Anyways, Leanne McAdoo, you haven't said a lot today as you're over there uh, all snuggled in, freezing. What do you make of uh, the day? I think it's been a great victory. All these people, nobody's putting up with this, and they don't know what to think of it. And... Also, I felt like I was watching, like, Gotham City when the mayor was talking. He was like, we're amazing here in Dallas, and we've changed a lot in the last 50 years. And it made it all about Dallas. JFK wasn't the president of Dallas. He was the president of the United States of America. Ugh. That's all i got to say about that. Very, very well said, Leanne. Very, very good. This is very, very exciting. Oh, look, we have the Federal Protective Service here to, 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 uh, to, uh, to, keep, to keep the empty stands safe from the citizens. There's some corporate uh, state-run media in there that is so royal that they have Federal Protective Services there to literally wipe their booties because they are completely royal. You know, the Queen of England actually has a groom of the stool. And I'm serious, the Queen of England. And I think all... I think I think all citizens of America should live like they do in North Korea, and that it should be a law that that the federal government is God, and that we wipe the hind end of anyone that is in the federal government. We already basically pay for their whole life and everything they do. So I think we should actually chop our children's heads off and spray their blood directly into the mouths of the feds to fatten the vampires even quicker. First, I'm being sarcastic before the New York Times uh, runs that as a headline and a story, but we're here. And this is very, very successful. And then we got to find the, the Copa folks. Cause we're going to go in there at 2.30, right? Okay, well, where are they? Because they're the ones we're supposed to be doing this with. We can just get this over with. That is a mustache. Oh, my God. That guy is a rock star right there. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that is that looks like a fake mustache. That's so good. I mean, that is spectacular. 
I mean, I mean, it's like the Russian czar. Oh, come on over here. You know you want to show it off. That's why you got it. <laughs> I mean, that, that is spectacular. <laughs> Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we are broadcasting live and worldwide here. And I got a little dingy and a little goofy. I haven't been getting a lot of sleep. Because outside the hotel, there's a whole train depot. And it's not noisy during the day, but at night, all they do is ding, 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 and go back and forth. I got, Leanne, you were telling me you haven't been getting much sleep. No, not a lot. We have a great view. It's a spectacular view, but the train, the train station is mighty loud at night. Ding, 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 especially at about 3 in the morning. Again, it is so awesome to be out here with all of you. Hey, let, let's walk around to the front and get a better view over here. Come on. This is awesome. Again, David Knight, I'm about to get over here. I'm going to bullhorn some here in just a minute. But, uh, well, hold on. Oh, we, we can't go over there? Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Well, never mind. I thought that was open. Well, soon we'll be able to, soon we'll be able to go do something. Is it, is it great to have a free press and free speech, Alex? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly what Kenny was talking about. All right, I'll go back down this way. Come on, let's go. Everybody, we're not going to do this much oh, longer. We just had to show everybody that, you know, we're not going to let them take over and not let us have free speech, and that's good. We've exercised it. It's been very successful. And most of the establishment media has already done their news pieces. I wanted to be nice and not do this to you, but I'll try to shoot it over your heads. Here we go. You state-run media in there are a joke, and people are awake and aware of what you're doing. We are sick and tired of your propaganda and all of your garbage, and we are aware of what you're doing, and we have more viewers and listeners today than any of your biggest stations by themselves. And there's more real media rising up all the time because people are hungry for the truth. The people are hungry for reality. They're hungry for choice. They don't want to be spoon-fed. That's why people fought back in the old Soviet Union and spoke out. And that's what we're doing. We're not letting you turn America by every yardstick into an authoritarian, oppressive system. And I want to salute the real independent media, not just here but worldwide, exposing the fact that John F. Kennedy was murdered by a conspiracy of criminals within the federal government and offshore banks to turn America into a system that can be extracted and enslaved, in the words of MSNBC former host Dylan Radigan. John F. Kennedy was murdered here 50 years ago today. His body wasn't even cold right now 50 years ago today. And we are here to expose the reality of what went on here. And then they killed Martin Luther King. They killed RFK. They killed his brother. This is the reality, and that's why we're here standing up for free speech and standing against the 50-year establishment lie that one man killed John F. Kennedy here in Dallas 50 years ago. I officially declare the lie that a lone gunman killed Kennedy dead. You're fraud. And the empire that you wanted to build globally off the blood, sweat, and tears of Americans is collapsing. This corporate empire has been at the expense of the American people and other people around the world. It is hurting our country, hurting our name, and we declare your new world order is dead. Your world government is falling. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. 
www.thepatriotsupply.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Many anthropologists